Hello, how's it going? Last week, um, so we had just descended down into the cave. We had hurt ourselves on the way down the episode before. But with the help of our little friend Mike, who followed us down into the cave system, um, we were able to recuperate and recover and we ventured down into the cave. So we're trying to find the source of the poison water that has been poisoning Thornhaven. So we descended down into this cave system. Um, we had a little moment with Mike as well where we were talking and then all of a sudden um, a creature called a choker crawled along the cavernous walls and attacked us and we had a fight. We had a pretty good little fight with a choker. Um, that's not the one where Mike... Because Mike keeps on getting hurt. We had just healed Mike, then Mike ended up taking a buttload of damage. Um, we ended up taking a, a bit of damage as well because I think we had to long rest at some point. That's right, the poison mushrooms, thank you. So we fought a choker, we had a discussion with Mike and Mike thought that he was useless. Um, and you guys voted to tell him that he wasn't and to bring him along with us for the rest of the journey. Uh, we started venturing so deep underground that we started finding all of these poisonous mushrooms and we had to navigate them to try not to touch any. Mike touched some, causing a poisonous explosion of mushroom gas. Um, and we ended up taking a buttload of damage that about with that and having to heal again. Oh my goodness. We gave him cure wounds because we decided that we were going to use a spell slot to heal him. That's right. We ended up venturing so deep underground that we reached the Underdark. There was a point where we had three cave system tunnels to choose from and you guys chose, I think, the middle one. And so it took us eight hours to descend down into the Underdark and you now find yourself in a world underneath a world. You were literally underneath Thornhaven but in what looks to be like a completely different world you look up and you only see you don't see a cave system roof you see darkness like a sky you don't see typical shrubs and bushes that you're used to seeing you see fungal growths mushrooms as tall as trees um, weird shrubs um, if you look really closely um, like small like burrowing creatures not typical of what of anything you've ever seen before on the surface so you're now literally underneath Thornhaven looking for the source of the poison that is turning the people in the village mad and into what I've now called shard zombies because they drink the liquid or they eat, they eat something that has been poisoned by the liquid. Um, and then they start turning and within three days it kills them. Um, and shards start growing from within their bodies. I have got a stable diffusion to make me an image that I now have decided is a bit too um, graphic to share with you all about what they look like. But just imagine a human flesh being like, you know, gone gone like blue and rotten and then like blue shards of glass like protruding through eyeball sockets and the tops of heads and until like the flesh literally just kind of peels away that's that's what these delightful creatures look like when they're done so we're trying to figure out why the fuck this is happening or who is doing this right with our little friend mike so we've been following a little a little stream a little river from the surface to the Underdark. Uh, the first thing that we've come across in the Underdark since following this stream was a little, hey Lily, was a house. And when we investigated, we found that the inhabitants of this house had turned into the same shard-like zombies that we were encountering on the surface, right? So they, they must have been, I don't know, but you're, you're on the right track. You're in the right place, right? And then you decided to kill them and set their house on fire because that's what Chad does. I'm pretty sure Mike went down, right? And again, we have brought him back to life. Again. Let's see how many hit points is on. Oh no, he's fully, we must have long rested. Did we long rest at the end of last episode? I can't recall. I think we did. I think, no, I think we did. We went out, we went, out the back of where the burning house was under some tree-like shrubs 
and we rested for eight hours. Something else that's really important, chat, is see these things here, right? I've added something new. I'm always tweaking as we go. Season two is gonna be awesome. I have so many different ideas. But info for you guys is really important. So we have a death countdown. So a couple of episodes ago, we found the source of the poison in Thornhaven, and it was from a well, a well that connects to the water in this cave system, which is why we're here. And what did Chat decide to do? Well, you decided to destroy the well. And you cast Shatter and you exploded the well. And of course, water flies everywhere. So we had to make a constitution saving throw as the water flew at us, which you failed. So you are now poisoned with the very substance you were trying to find a cure for as well. So at 72, we, we had a 72 hour countdown. We are now at 42 hours, right? One day gone, yeah? If you had all listened to me from the start, Mike would not have been a problem. I will give that to you, Winnie. So Winnie has been a, a, a get the fuck rid of Mike <laughs> voice from day one. <laughs> so we'll just see what happens. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so we're poisoned. You'll also, if anyone has any questions when we roll, when um, people roll to hit, we haven't, <laughs> he was like, listen, we have an AC class of 17. We have 36 hit points. This is our character here, Sin. She is a multi-class wizard ranger. And this is how we're gonna do spells. So we have seven spell slots. So between long rests, we can cast a blanket seven spells. We're not gonna worry about level one. We're not gonna worry about level two. We're basically gonna start with the most powerful spells and work our way down and just kind of use spell slots because uh, I figure that's the best way to do it and it kind of makes you guys stronger as well because we'll be casting things at higher levels. Any other housekeeping? I don't think so. When uh, numbers appear on the side with different options, type the numbers into chat. That's how you vote. I will be asking you guys to roll at various times and chat decides the outcome of this journey is ultimately up to all of you. Exclamation D20 for rolls. And man sets his roll to 15. With that roll, we go. <laughs> we should go out with a bang. I think you should go out with a bang too. Okay. And I think that's everything, chat. Is that everything? Man, save the good rolls for the game, dude. <laughs> Facts. Facts. So you wake up from your long rest, Mike beside you. The house that was once in front of you now smoldering ashes on the floor. Inside it must have been the inhabitants of the house that had turned to shard zombies. It's a good sign for you because you know you're getting close and at least you're in the right place. But the Underdark is a world like the world above. It stretches for miles. It is dangerous and cavernous and has all manner of different types of creatures and plants that you've never encountered before. And thank goodness you're a ranger because that doesn't spook you too much. Watch, watch we roll a three now. Oh my God. If we don't get anything high, I'm going to fly over there and run you over with my chair. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, all right, they're getting aggressive. All right, we've got to go out with a bang for sure. Okay. So you need to find the source of this you need to find who is doing this so you need to make a decision chat you need to decide what your plan is in what direction are you going to go in this perhaps last chapter to try and piece together the final bits of the puzzle <laughs> I'll stream it if Winnie comes over I'll stream it 
There's a bit of space behind me. They can go at it. Okay. Let me talk you through some options that you have for how you might decide to progress from here. Number one, you can try to find a creature to interrogate for information. What type of creature you'll stumble upon? Don't know, but maybe you'll be able to communicate with someone or something to see if they've noticed a pattern, if they've met anyone nefarious, something like that. Number two, you can try to draw upon your wizardness, your sense of arcana, to try and track the signature of the magic within the poison. Three, you can use your nature skills as a ranger to try and track the path of poison through the stream. Four, you can attempt to reverse engineer the poison for tracking. Now that will be a little bit more complicated. You'll have to go, some of these will, in, will involve you having to go and inspect the water of the stream, which you can kind of deduce that if these creatures in this house were poisoned by it, that it's very likely that their water source was the stream and that's how it happened to them. So then you can try to reverse engineer the poison for tracking more relying upon your medicine skill. So it's kind of, what do you want to do? Number one is more your charisma base. What do you like at persuasion? Uh, how charismatic are you? Do you want to intimidate or deceive someone for information? That kind of line of thinking. Number two is drawing upon your arcane senses as a wizard. Number three is more drawing upon your ranger senses and your uh, connection with nature and the environment. And number four is um, more alchemy based, alchemy, medicine, uh, that kind of thing. If you want to find a creature, Chris, that's a vote for number one. You guys are gonna make me work today. Number four is the hardest for me to DM, thank you. <laughs> Sean, hi. Sean, guess what? Guess what, Sean? Mike is still with us. Mike is still with us. You can talk to, you can talk to um, Lion. Hello, lovely. Um, time to work. Fuck. Um, thanks. You can talk to Winnie about it, Sean, and commiserate together. Winnie has been trying to get rid of Mike since he rejoined us. <laughs> Mike the Meat Shield. Hey, oh, Mike the Meat Shield is here. Okay, is this poll done? <gasps> Chris, thank you for voting number one, which has been the easiest one for me to DM. But that's fine. This is chat decides for a reason. I'm going to finish the poll now. It looks like we did have an overwhelming winner. Lion, I, I see you chiming in to just vote for the hardest one, by the way. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> <laughs> He's grown on you? 42? We, we didn't get to option 42. See, for option one, we could have, you know, charisma, you could have seduced something. But anyways, okay. Attempt number four, we're going to try to reverse engineer the poison for tracking. Fuck you guys. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have, I have some, I'd refer to some notes if you guys roll well. So we're going to go, the answer is always 42, like a fungus. So you make your way down to the stream, which you assume is the source of the poison. The stream already looks a little bit unnatural, uh, because it's not of this world. It is full of so many different minerals from being underground. Um, we're going to attempt to reverse engineer the poison for tracking. So first of all, we have to locate the source of the poison within this water source. I'm going to need a, I'm going to do the average of two rolls. I'm going to do the average of two rolls. 
So who were the first buttholes to vote for four? Man sets Fi, can I get a D20 for a medicine check? And uh, who was the second butthole? Winnie, can I get a exclamation point D20 for an arcana check? And I'm going to take the average of both your rolls. Because we're looking for a few different things in the water now. <sighs> Winnie, did you roll that because man's rolled a 15 before? Shame. Um, okay, so with those terrible rolls <laughs> and an average of uh, 15 divided by 2, 7.5, <laughs> with an average of 7 or 8. We always roll down in DED, don't we? An average of 7. term of endearments <laughs> with a seven you pull out you know a few little bits and bobs of equipment from your backpack and you start studying this water you're kind of trying to draw arcane power and knowledge um, from the minerals to try and discern what the kind of nature is of the poison in the water you're using medicine to try and um, figure out sources of like uh, medicinal ingredients or properties or whatever and with a seven you just can't you just can't piece it together with enough certainty to kind of give you any kind of answers at all does anybody have any other kind of suggestions for how they might want to approach reverse engineering a poison when we can't actually extract the poison from the water source. I could have you roll again. If someone has a particularly creative idea that you'd want to try and roll for to try and do, please type it in chat. I'm always open to directions that, that you guys want to go in. Don't lick the damn thing. That is an option. We're already poisoned. We're already poisoned. So you can drink this water now. Can we use our own poisoned blood? I love both of these ideas. I'm going to have you guys vote on them. Is it visible in the air? It's not. We've, you have managed to discern that it is in, it is transferable through like liquid consumption right? So it would be in our bloodstream. If we had it in the water, it can um, get absorbed through plants. And then if you eat the plants, like if so, you could assume that if someone ate our corpse, we would then become infected. Like it's kind of, it moves that way. So the original thing you guys voted for was to try and reverse engineer the poison to try and find the source of the poison. So we could then track it that way. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can now do that now that we have failed with analyzing it in the water source. We can analyze the corpses of the infected, remembering that they are burnt and charred, right? Um, we can go and see what remains of them. Vote one. Vote two if you now want to analyze your own poisoned blood. Or three if you're like, maybe we'll just follow the source of the stream a little bit. I guess it's big pharma dumping waste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See if the mushrooms have absorbed the water. You could analyze the plant life that gets its sustenance from, for sure. Follow the money. There's no money. There's no money. We're not get you guys aren't even getting paid for this gig. You took this gig out of the goodness of your own hearts and then out of the goodness of your own hearts to save the people of Thornhaven murdered a bunch of them. I would just like to remind you of the fact that you're all um, murderers. Thank you. Fungus as in Mike. Make Mike eat a piece of mushroom. (laughs) All in a day's work, ayo. All right, so we're going to analyze analyze our own poison blood. We can't analyze Mike's blood. Mike is not poisoned. 
You, again, with this shatter spell, which I feel like we should revoke from you all because you're all irresponsible, um, <laughs> you cast shatter on a crowd of commoners who have like two hit points, right? And you just killed, you killed them all, but one. He's not poisoned yet. No, it was just us. When we exploded the well and accidentally drank some of the water, he was not with us. Come and eat this real quick. Hey, Mike, come eat this mushroom. It's good, it's good for you. Mushrooms are healthy, right? Okay. You pull out your dagger and you kind of prick, prick your finger. And you notice that your blood, which we all know blood runs red, is kind of a dark crimsony, almost has a purple hue to it now. There's definitely something unnatural about your blood now that you're poisoned. Let's roll, let's roll some checks. Let's roll some checks. Um, I'm going to do, is it gonna be, would it be the same kind of checks? I'm thinking medicine again. Who's gonna be better at rolling? <laughs> who's, gonna, who's gonna be better at rolling? <laughs> uh, Rusty, can I have an exclamation point D20 for a medicine check on our funky purple blood. You kind of smear it in between your fingers a little bit. It congeals normal like blood, but there's something unnatural and tainted in you now that manifests its way. 19! Let's go! Plus uh, one, I think. Plus our wisdom modifier, so a dirty 20. Amazing! Let me find some information. Hold on. Okay, with a dirty 20 medicine check, Take notes, that's how you roll. With a dirty 20 medicine check, we're able to... <laughs> Just roll with me here because this is not plausible in any way. <laughs> but we are able to, we are able to analyze the poison within our own blood. Um, how we do this, we don't have the materials for it. I don't know. We're just, we're, we're magic, right? Magic. Dungeons and Dragons. Magic. Shit just happens. Um, we're going to analyze our own blood and somehow without any medical equipment whatsoever on a dirty 20, uh, isolate, <laughs> analyze and isolate the, uh, the poison substance where logic fails. Just, just magic, just magic. Um, there's science behind it, but it's beyond our comprehension and we just can't understand it right now until we do more research. We isolate this compound in our blood. Let's say we pull on some arcane forces while we can. We kind of look at the blood. We do our medicine check to identify the particles within our blood that are foreign. And then we, let's do some funky magic shit. And then we kind of just pull pull those substances from the droplets on our fingers out into the air and then we pull out a vial we had a vial this whole time in our pockets and we kind of magically just put them down into into the vial and we close the top of the lid and now now inside this vial da, 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 da. hey if you want to bullshit let's go for it <laughs> If a team can build a tank with a needle and thread, we can isolate poison with our eyes. We can, we can. We've, we've done it with like our eyes and magic. And now inside this vial, you have this bright blue glowing poison now that you've isolated from your blood. Let's not go into any kind of sense of real realism there. <laughs> okay, we now have this vial of blood. What do you want to do now that you, um, this vial of blood, this vial of like a tiny little bit of this poison substance in it. Thank you, Sean. What do you guys want to do now that you have this? Ali, thank you for gifting a sub to Winnie. So we've, we've, we've t extracted this thing. How, how, we, how are you planning on using this? to find, to, to progress the story, all of you who voted on reverse engineering the blood, the poison. So now you have a, you have a copy of, a copy of the poison substance itself. Mike's just looking at you wide eyed while you did that whole magical extraction. 
And he comes up and he looks real close at the vial and he's like, whoa, that's it? Do you know where this came from? Who could possibly make something like this? Try to attune to it and see if we can find its source. Okay, Arcana. Mans, give me a d20 Arcana check, please, to see if we can attune to the magic of this vial and use it like a little compass. We're going to use it like a little compass, you guys. Like wherever it kind of pings to in the vial. Or magic, we can do that shit. Mans has rolled a five. Nope, we're not going to use it like a compass. Or not. I gotta stop asking mans for rolls. It's because he suggested it. All right. So you have extracted this poison from your blood. You now have it in its concentrated raw form. You're not really able to do much with it. You haven't been very successful. This whole thing I'm gonna say has taken you about an hour to try and do. So your death countdown's gone down to 41 while you've done this. Hi, Erin, thank you for the raid. How's it going? You better roll next week. Okay, uh, we're going to, we're gonna pocket our little vial and we're gonna decide to just keep following the stream of water. You follow the stream down into the Underdark. You get uh, more and more densely populated with these different kind of like shroom-like trees and shrubs as you go. It's getting quite dark. Um, Sean, do better. Can you please roll me a d20 for a uh, perception check? As we walk through has rolled a two. Uh, you notice nothing particularly unnatural as you continue to walk through the dense undergrowth. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right, so I'm like banning multiple people from rolls today. <laughs> uh, you don't seem to notice anything. The only thing that strikes you as, I guess, as naturally peculiar is that a lot of these um, mushrooms and plants that must be absorbing whatever has been put into the stream don't seem in any way unnatural to you. And if this stream is the source of everything, the source of the flow of the poison, then it makes sense that everything along the way would be getting poisoned um, and be poisonous but they seem fine but then again the cabbages seemed fine who haven't I called on Allie beautiful Allie can I please have a d20 check from you we're going to do a nature check on one of these mushrooms to see if they have absorbed any of the poison from the stream has rolled a three you walk over to a mushroom and you cut a little bit off with your dagger and you inspect its insides. And as you remember with the cabbages above, um, they seemed to have a little bit of a, a, a shimmer to them. Um, but it's so dark in the underdark and these mushrooms themselves kind of glow with their own internal source of luminescence that as you cut off a piece and look inside, you can't really discern whether it's poison or glow. Um, you basically learn nothing. <laughs> you guys are learning <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> burn all the dye burn all the dye okay I have information to give you <laughs> okay not a problem going to continue tracking this stream let's see you know what where are my dice actually let me roll it in chat let's see if mike can realize something otherwise what the fuck is he there for huh let's roll a perception check for mike he has no no additions to this let's just see what he does can mike save you wow wow did you guys just hear him lose his shit laughing? Wow. 
Mike's just like, dee, 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 dee. you know, this is really cool. This is really cool. I can't wait to tell all my friends at school about that I was in the underdark. Like, these mushrooms are amazing. I mean, I really lo I love mushrooms on toast. I wonder if you can eat these things. Are these mushrooms alive? I wonder if they're alive. <laughs> <laughs> Mike doesn't even know what day it is. Mike's like, hmm. <laughs> He's like, oh, I love mushrooms. Actually, I'm, I haven't eaten in a while. And he goes up to a rather, a rather thin, spindly-looking mushroom that's kind of just there in amongst some of the larger ones. And he goes to take a bite from the mushroom because you know mushrooms are edible right no mike don't shall i try a roll do you want a roll to try and stop him chris give me an exclamation point d20 for a we'll make it a dexterity we'll do a dexterity check to see if we can quickly run over to mike and stop him from biting you just need to get above a 10 What the fuck? What the fuck? This is this is too good. This is too good, you guys. Okay. Wow. Okay, you try to stop Mike from biting into one of these mushrooms. <laughs> You want to take the average between a three and a one? You rolled a two. <laughs> oh, shit. What is going on? This, you guys, it's all random, by the way. I have no idea. No one can get above a 10. Wow. That's crazy. Okay, well, Mike is biting this mushroom. Mike tends... Let's <laughs> roll the six. <laughs> It doesn't count. You should have saved it. You should have saved it. <laughs> oh my god, we're dying tonight. We, you may die. All right, so you're gonna walk. He's gonna walk over and he's gonna take a bite of this mushroom, right? And it's standing there quite still. It's kind of spindly um, compared to the other mushrooms. And he he goes to take a bite a bite of it. Let me do a roll. <laughs> I can't believe you guys. I'll just do a straight roll. It's my d20 for our... Ah, it doesn't. Okay. Um, and he successfully takes a little nibble. He takes like a little... Because he's a little halfling. He takes like a little chomp out of this mushroom. And in response, this mushroom, tall, spindly one... Um, two arms kind of break free of what you would have thought was like it's it's slender trunk um the bottom of it um kind of it rips its two little legs out of the ground these two little thin legs the top of its head kind of like glows and and kind of pulsates a little bit um <laughs> no, like, everyone stop rolling <laughs> It's, it's happened. It's happened. And this uh, living mushroom kind of in response kind of backs up and then slaps Mike across the side of the face. Um, is it going to do any damage though? Let's have a look. <coughs> With a natural 20, it is going to hurt him. This smack only for one, only for one point of damage. On, on our little Mike friend. It's a damn smack. He goes to the ground. You feel inside your mind. It's like your mind's being warped and, and pulled. And it's like fragments of another language are coming together um, inside your mind, but it's having to be warped and reshaped in order for you to understand. And you just hear... Uh, one word, stranger. That's the, that's the only way you can make sense of what you feel is coming into your mind. You just hear this word reverberate, 
stranger. And you feel like it's coming from this mushroom creature. Um, Ali, can you, uh, no, Alicia, who hasn't, who haven't I called for a roll from? Alicia, let's see if you can redeem your one. Can I please get an exclamation D20 check, D20 from you? History check on seeing this creature. Why does the mushroom get to slap Mike? <laughs> see, he was doing it for you, Sean. Has rolled a four. You're not, you, you're not experienced enough in the underdark to understand what this creature is. <laughs> you can't tell what this mushroom creature is. Um, what do you? What are we going to attempt to do in response to it? Simple options now. You've just heard the word stranger reverberate inside your mind. What are we going to do in response to this, this mushroom coming alive? It slapped Mike. It hasn't gone to attack him or lunge on him. It hasn't come at you. It's just standing there having like, I mean, Mike just took a bite from it. So that like, I mean, I think slapping him um, away isn't the worst response that it could have had. So do you want to try to turn and run from this thing? Do you want to attack it? Or do you want to try and speak to it? Does it seem mean? No. No. It seems wary of you. And I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a moving mushroom. Um, you can discern it has, like now that you look at it quite closely, you can kind of see a face on like the top of the trunk where the, like the mushroom head meets, you can discern a face, no mouth though, but maybe something that it uses as eyes. Um, but it doesn't seem malicious or angry or anything like that. Like everybody wants to speak to it. Cool. Chat, what do you say? What are you going to say back? And are you going to think it or speak it? I come in peace. Let's roll with that. You say it out loud. I've been wanting to do that since I first met him. <laughs> you want to think it. All right. You look at this creature and in your mind you concentrate as it's kind of still feeling like it's being a little bit warped and pulled and you think... I come in peace. And then the deep, dirty, greasy recesses of your mind, you think, fuck, I've been wishing I could have smacked Mike since I first met him. <laughs> Doesn't know anything about the poison. Sorry to intrude, but I'm looking for help. Some of you guys are so, so polite. I love it. I'd love to see how you all played your, you would all play your individual characters. I think I get a sense of what you'd all naturally kind of be and that's why we have no alignment because we're going all over the shop one second we're good making promises not to hurt anybody the next second we're murdering crowds of people the next second we're telling mike he's annoying the next second we're saying don't worry mike you've got value please come along <laughs> oh shit all right so we're having a conversation with this mike in it you kind of stare at it and it doesn't again it just it kind of it's moving there really slowly but it's not making any kind of advances or anything and then you hear again in your mind a question form out of the warped pulling um why are you here and then drawing upon what chris said next in chat you're going to communicate telepathically back you're here to investigate the source of a poison that is harming people in the earth world above and that you were led here to investigate its source. You pull out the vial, the blue shining vial that has this kind of flickering substance that you've extracted from your blood within it and you show it to the mushroom creature and we're going to telepathically ask it for its help. Thank you, Rusty. We're on the same page. Yes, we're going to show it the vial of the, the extracted poison substance that we found. And upon seeing this substance, it's 
the first time that you kind of see the creature who's just been standing there, it kind of like inflates a little bit. Like imagine like it's it's sucking in air and kind of puffing up a little bit. And then you hear just one word in your mind, follow. And then it turns around and starts to walk away from the stream into like a, the underground forest, basically, of all these like fungi creatures. Are you going to follow it, chat? Mike's just looking at you the whole time, being like, what's, what's going on? Sin, what's, hey, Sin. And you're just blocking him out, having this telepathic conversation with this mushroom. And he's like, mm. Sin, hey. And he comes up and he's pulling on your robes like the annoying little fucker that he is. Sin, hey, what's going on? Hey, is it, it slapped, did you see it slapped me? How come we're not attacking it? I've seen you attack, hey, Sin. <laughs> is he friend or foe i guess you don't really know alicia you've had a very small interaction with it where it, it's not speaking to you the adults are talking as it turns to leave you turn around and go yes mike yes no sh look i know what i'm doing i told you that you were here to help you have been in your own way, I'm sure very helpful, but what I need you to do is just follow and just remain quiet. We're gonna, we're gonna follow the mushroom. The mushroom that hit me, but it hit me. Mike, you, you, you bit it, dude. You, you just went and walked up. What were you thinking anyways? There is poison and we don't know how many creatures and plants around here we know the stream is the poison, dude. Why would you try to eat anything at all that is connected to this stream? And he's like, oh, but, you know, I'm really hungry and I ran out of rations during our long rest. And I really like mushrooms. Mushrooms are delicious. Yeah, but do, you don't just walk up and take bites from random plant. Anyways, look, it's getting away. Let's, let's just, just keep your mouth shut and we're going to follow him, okay? All right, and you start to wind your way through the darkness following this mushroom. Drink, oh, now I'm onto water. Piss off you little shit, I'm busy. <laughs> now the underdark is naturally dark, right? Except for these beautiful like purpley blue, pink colored like, plants that seem to be the source of light because there's no sunshine so everything is kind of like cast in shadow by these glowing you know plants that light up everything around you as you kind of follow this myconid you, you're asking it questions telepathically and it's not responding to you you're asking it where are you going you're asking it do you know where this do you know where this substance comes from you ask it are you friendly and it just ignores you and continues to wind its way through. Now, as you move deeper and deeper into the forest, so you're only walking for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so, but it's so dense that all of a sudden it seems to stop and part and you're in this massive clearing and you are hit by this giant shining shimmering light. And as you look before you, you see hundreds in this massive clearing. It almost looks like a valley. You see hundreds of these mushroom creatures. They're all varying shapes and sizes. Imagine all the different types of mushrooms and ones you can't even imagine that you've seen in your life. They seem to take any and every type of form. Um, some have multiple limbs. Some only have like the two arms that we're used to. Some look more like just straight walking mushrooms. Some are short and fat and plump. Others are tall and spindly with multiple, looks like multiple kind of heads. It almost look like, you know, like braids or dreads. Um, some look are as tall as like eight foot tall, all different manner of these different mushroom creatures. They have made um, organic structures out of some of the larger mushrooms that look like little like 
houses and and um, you can't really quite quite tell, but they've made like these little like indentations where they seem to congregate as well. But in the middle of this like mushroom village that you've come across is this absolutely enormous tree. And it looks like a tree. It looks like a tree that you would find on the surface. You haven't seen anything like it underneath in the underdark so far. And it is huge and it has tall, long branches. Like this tree is so big, like all the village is below it, around it in like a circle and it is in its center and its leaves fall up and outwards and seem to like move in. Like there's no air down here, but they seem to swell, swell and move. No worries, Roland, welcome in. They seem to swell and and move in an invisible um, in an invisible breeze that isn't present down here and it glows it glows so bright that it illuminates the entire village below and this myconode kind of you kind of come down a bit of a hill descending down into this like open valley where this village is and it turns and with its arm kind of makes a motion to keep going and you walk down are they having a party? <laughs> they just seem to be going along whatever their kind of like mushroom business is down in this place. Um, you walk down, you start to walk amongst them. And they don't, some of them stop and seem to, if they had eyes, fully formed eyes, they'd be looking at you, but they kind of seem to stop only for a moment and then continue doing, they seem fairly unfazed by your presence um and this mushroom leads you down into this area where it looks like basically a little bit more done up than the rest of the village it's probably a section reserved for the kind of leader of this colony you want to ask some people about this place the Mike, it, um, just said what it is, but it doesn't matter. The mushroom person um, puts a word in your head again, leader, and presents you to this rather fat looking, um, this rather fat looking mushroom. He's got a really, really big mushroom capped head. It's kind of got growth and spores, like spots all over its front. Um, and you're now before like the leader of this colony. Would we like to, we want to talk to this Myconid. What kind of things do you want to ask it chat? We can have a conversation. I'm not going to put questions up. Um, if there's anything that you want to ask this mushroom king, just type it in chat. Uh, let's start off with a variation on what Chris has said. You telepathically communicate with this mushroom and ask it, is this a trap? Roland, I'll add on what you said. Are you hostile? Like, do you mean, do you mean us harm? You just kind of project those kind of thoughts. Do you mean us harm? Are we safe? You know, and you just get back more of, instead of a word, more of a question and a feeling. You get a, f um, like, the quest, you get a feeling of the word friend, but it's not being told to you. It's being asked as a question. It's like, friend? It's asking you if you're friendly to it. And you just bit its bit one of its people but you know friend and you respond back yes I am not I am not here to hurt you I'm I'm here because of this and you pull out the vial and you present it you ask telepathically do you know anything about an infection that has been spreading No. 
is the response you get to that question. Do you know the source of the poison? And is there a cure? Do you know what this poison is? Aha. Do you ask, do you know the source of this? And the mushroom looks at the glowing substance and then looks up at the tree, the giant branches of this tree that now kind of envelop you and come over. And it looks up at the tree. Do you know the source of the poison? And it looks up at the tree. You're going to ask clarifying questions. Is, is the tree the source of the poison? And the myconid's going to look at you and go, and telepathically, just assume it's all telepathic now, and go, not poison, life. I'm like, life. And you go, you, you kind of point to the cut on your finger and you telepath, this is from my blood. This is poison that was within my blood. Poison from within the water. This is not, this is not life. This is poison. And it looks at the element in the vial and goes, life from tree. Can I drop my weapon to prove I'm a friend? Yeah, we have a quarter staff, Roland. So for sure, let's say you lay, you lay the, you lay your, you kind of have the vial and you kind of lay your quarter staff on the ground. You know, we're just here to have a conversation. What kind of life? And you hear the word twilight tree at the at, at the word twilight tree reverberating through your mind every myconid in the entire colony stops and looks up at the tree above you and you say Aha, where did that tree come from? Is it one of yours? And you kind of get a series of like feelings and images and, and, and disjointed words now coming into your brain. Twilight tree, um, you know, it's always been here. Um, kind of these myconids, my, they're myconids, uh, gravitating towards it and kind of settling um, amongst them, um, you, f you sense, um, a history of war and turmoil and violence. And then when the tree comes into their history, you sense, um, calm and solitude and peace. Um, you kind of get the sense that I should have had you roll for this, but I'm going to give it to you because you guys are rolling fucking terrible. Um, you get a sense that they believe that this tree is a home for lost souls and that, communing and feeding the tree and keeping it healthy and um, giving these lost souls a home it, it's bringing the myconid colony its own sense of peace myconids you didn't roll a good history check before but myconids uh, don't like confrontation they don't like intruders they like to be left alone and this they kind of this tree seems to protect them in a way from everything else um, yeah. Is it sap from the tree? I'll roll. <laughs> uh, you go to approach the tree to inspect it. You're very close to its trunk. It's giant trunk. Um, I, I can't, I, it's, it's huge, um, to kind of walk. It's like a wall at this point. And as you do, two myconids kind of stop you from approaching any closer you're about you're about 10 feet 
from this this tree now can we show them what the tree is doing to the town you show them images of in response of your own journey you show them uh, your experiences of Thornhaven you show them um, when you went through the prison and you saw all the different people at different stages of um, uh, like madness you show them when you went to the temple of Pelor and you saw all the dead corpses that had become giant um, shards of glass in death you show them um, a poisoned well you show them a poisoned cabbage um, you show them your own experience getting poisoned by the water and then you show them your descent down into the underdark uh, and your experience finding two people in a house well zombie people in a, a house that mimic the exact same conditions of the people above and you link it all back to the water now you are very far from the stream at this point you had to literally walk away from the stream this tree is not anywhere near the water source you would just inherently know that from navigating and following this myconid and tell us how you, how you really feel about our roles <laughs> That's why this free-flowing conversation, there's no roles unless you're going to try and persuade them or anything. <clears throat> um, can I ask a question about this colony? Of course you can. Just pop your questions in chat and I'll, I'll answer them. Um, let's make firewood. Oh my god, Alicia. A bonfire. Oh my goodness. All right. So they are, they are at one with this tree. Um, I'll ask for you what is the connection then between what is in the vial and what is in the tree and you say our source our source of life from the tree source of life from the tree what is their reaction after they saw our journey ah good good question um yeah for sure so they you 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 conveniently didn't remember the murders uh, we're not gonna put that image in their mind um <laughs> uh they understand you had a, a sense of understanding they understand that you're here they they are willing to help you but they want to help you as quickly as possible because they want you gone can I do a charisma check to persuade it to believe its life is harming people Go for it. Hey, Ams. No worries. Roland, can you exclamation point D20 a persuasion check? So if you haven't done that before, Roland, it's just literally exclamation point D20 in chat for persuasion and we're going to add our charisma modifier which is a plus two everyone has been rolling horribly let's see if you can roll better she said we're not near the stream of water we're not but there's clearly a connection here we just haven't rolled correctly oh um there you go has rolled a three. Roland, no, you were meant to, so it's a five. You were meant to be our redeemer. <laughs> Join, welcome in officially. <laughs> welcome in officially. <laughs> Everyone's rolling shitty today. Oh my goodness. So you, you, you try to persuade it that its life is harming people and it dismisses that very quickly as soon as you say it. 
It doesn't take offense, it doesn't get angry. It just dismisses that, like it just knows so deeply in its old long lineage of history and the way that these Myconids kind of all work as a colony where they have this shared sense of oh, everything really. Um, you and Duck might end up killing each other. Probably could have predicted that. <laughs> um, and it knows that this tree is not it believes that this tree is not evil. I'm going to ask it a question that you have not yet asked. You are going to ask it and disengage in the conversation. You're going to ask it, am I the first? Am I the first non myconid non-mushroom? that you have seen recently and it is going to say no dun 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 <laughs> I was hoping someone would, would ask something similar so I could contort it but I'm going to give you that your, your roles have just been so crappy that I am going to give you that Who has come to visit you? You ask it who has come to visit recently. And you hear short man in your head. Magic man in your head. And then you hear the word trade. <laughs> and then you hear the word trade like elves you go tall slender pointy ears and you hear back short squat muscles is it a dwarf you say the word dwarf the Mikan it doesn't understand you. But it goes many in underdark. Short man alone. You point at Mike. And you go like him. Meanwhile, Mike is just standing there like I was told not to speak, and he's just kind of looking around, looking at this tree, like, whoa. whoa. You know, just kind of just like in awe, but knows he's not allowed to say anything. And it goes fatter, bigger. You ask what its intent with the tree is. And it says protect. Protect lost souls. Give home. In return, peace. Please tell me Mike has a black eye. His, his, his face has started to go a little bit puffy. He did take one bludgeoning damage from that smack. His face started to go a bit red and puffy. You see this like myconid, you know, kind of gnarled hand like thing in its face. Sure, his eyes going a bit black. Can't you just show me a mental image of what the dude looks like? It can, it, can, it can paint bits of pictures, yeah? So it can't just project a, an image in your head. It can give you enough words to paint a picture, yeah? So you see uh, dark skin. You see uh, a, a short, squat, muscular body. You see uh, a long gray beard. You see, um, like, glowing eyes. Um, a very powerful figure 
um, intimidating figure, you sense that when they interacted with this person that there was fear involved. Um, and again, that same sense of that you sense now where they're willing to help you so you'll leave. That same kind of let's help this let's help this creature so it will leave. But it did say the word trade. There you go. Have we seen this person before? No. You have not in for those of you who haven't been in any previous episodes, um, you have not encountered anybody that looks similar to this. You met a bunch of halflings in the pub. Um, it's not them. It doesn't look like Mike. Chris kind of said it before. It kind of looks, oh no, man's kind of said it before. It looks, it looks dwarvish in nature. Yeah. Um, Chris, can you roll me a D20 history check just so I can put some pieces together for you? Just do better than 10. I'm making the rolls so low now. Exclamation point D20. And yes, we're going to do all of that. And nope, I'm not going to give you any more information about uh, who, the, what this character could be. But what you are going to do is ask them all those amazing questions that you've just done in chat. Uh, so no, we haven't seen this person before. Um, you ask, what did they want? What did they want to trade? And it, you hear the word souls reverberate in your head and then it points it's like stubby little it might not even have fingers this one like just like a little stump of an arm and then it points at the vial trade souls for that and Sean again you, we, we point down to the out quarter staff that Roland had us lay on the ground next to us. We made them no harm. Um, we say we're not like, we're not like this being. We're not here to trade information, help. Did they harm you? Good question. We're only here to help. Did they harm you? And you heard peace and you get this overwhelming sense that peace is their only priority peace protection caring for the tree where can we find this man good question where can we find this man and it points it points to a direction adjacent to the stream but roughly in its direction and it says entrance cave danger how many souls did they trade that's a good question too Ali that's a good question <laughs> How many souls did you trade? And then you hear not trade. Gained. Gained. Hundred percent Roland, do an insight check, please. Love it. You can call for checks. Love it. So we have a plus four to our insight because we're proficient in wisdom. This should help you. Exclamation point D20. How many gained? Infinite. Infinite. Hi, Rav Navara. Arrived recently, feel incredibly invested. What does this tree look like? How large is it? Please ask as many questions as you want. So we are in the Underdark. We have followed a myconid to its colony, um, which is in this massive like valleyed clearing in a section of the Underdark. This tree is ginormous. The entire myconid colony has made its village around the circular base of this tree. So when you approach the tree, it is like a wall. 
in front of you. It's branches, kind of like it's so big, it's like a willow tree, but the, the branches never touch the ground and it's glowing and it just envelops the whole colony. And I described it before like the branches sway as if it's kind of suspended in water, as if there's like an imaginary breeze blowing the trees and it's moving on its own, but you, you sense no movement of air in this section of the Underdark. Roll the 17 plus four. Okay, with your insight check, you try to, you've, you've had so much psychic connection with this mic in it during this conversation that you're starting to get a read on kind of how it's work, even though it has no distinguishable facial movements or even facial features. Like it doesn't have, they don't seem to have mouths. They don't really seem to have eyes, just kind of indentations of where they may be. Um, but with an insight check of, it ends up being 21, you do get a sense that this creature is not lying. That it is almost incapable of it because its psychic connection with you is simply sharing a thought. And so it doesn't have the capacity to distort that thought before it gets to you. Also, being a, a mushroom colony, you can kind of deduce that they all kind of seem to share an amorphous consciousness as well. So for one of them to break break independently and say something that isn't true would be a, a great strain on that collective. Is he offering your souls to turn into myconids? It seems confused by this question that you pose it. It seems a little bit confused. Fun fact about Ali, you love willow trees. I love them too. I love this one too, and this one glows. It glows with the same color as, as the bit of um, poison extract we have in the vial. Is there anything I can take to help the town from this place? So that would mean if one day they all die. No, kind of think of it a little bit like, um, I mean, you can compare it to a lot of things you could compare. I mean, they're not malicious, but you could kind of compare it a little bit like the Borg in Star Trek. You can compare it a little bit like the, um, like, uh, like the, the, the spore based zombies in the last of us. If one dies, they don't all die, but they, sh they, they sense collectively and they can think collectively. Like they could just, they could just inherently know something about another Myconid, if that makes sense. But not to the point where they're like all replicas of each other or, or a, like a Borg consciousness that can't break free. Like they could, if they wandered too far from the colonies, I guess start to, anyways, we're getting a little bit into to Myconid history and you guys failed your history check. So, you know, don't metagame. <laughs> But they're really interesting. They're really interesting. Okay, beautiful people. What other, have I missed any other questions? Um, you said it's helping you grow. You also said it's offering souls for the poison. Is your colony growing as many people die from this poison? You should totally have, you Google what they look like. They're pretty cool. Or just make one from your own imagination based on the description. That'd be really cool. Oh, I would love to see that. I would love to see that so much. I wish we played D and D on a table where we could have little figurines. That'd be so awesome. But I, I dream. Um, uh, is your colony growing as people die from this poison? Colony of myconids. Again, it seems confused by your question. No, would be its response. Um, you're probably reaching the limitations of given their inability to communicate fully clearly with you, what it will be able to understand and explain. Um, but it, there was a trade. There was a trade that took place that involved this mysterious dwarven figure, um, proposing some kind of exchange from something that the tree was able to give that 
mat ha that has been extracted and put in this vial that you have a copy of now, which actually ended up being a pretty cool decision, so go chat. Um, and then an offering of an offering of souls to the tree. Malcolm the mic slapper mic in it, like if he turned into a mic in it. This was, I think, I'm hoping this was a very fruitful exchange for you, chat, given all the bad roles that you've had. I'm hoping that this connects a few dots. Um, with that insight check, you do get a feeling that they are honest, that they are innocence. Um, Roland wants to seduce it for more information. <laughs> What is the juice of mushroom? <laughs> okay. Okay. Give me the roll first. Because I just think this would be fun. It's going to be really high though, because you and you were uh, seducing the head of an entire hive colony. I'm going to make it really high. We do have a plus two to our persuasion. Um, it's going to have to be an 18 or higher. An 11 plus 2, 13. Gosh, even if I made it a 16. You try to seduce it. You go up, you go up to the mushroom and you kind of run your slender tiefling fingers along its like bumpy, chonky arm. And it just kind of like blank. <laughs> just confused just not even a little bit of confusion and just like blank <laughs> and Mike goes Sin I know you told me not to talk but what are you doing I thought you said we shouldn't touch them and you kind of just uh you get nothing so you kind of just shrug and take a few steps back again walk down pick up your pick up your quarter stuff uh getting ready to, de to depart can they help us? Um, the myconid just kind of points and you hear the word answers as it points in the direction of where it told you this, this being was. Answers and points that way. So this dude is offering unlimited souls for one vial. I feel like that's a question to the DM and I can't answer it for you. You, it is a good question. Back pocket it. Any more information you can give me, anything to help the town. Um, in response to that, the mic and it just kind of points in the direction again of where you should go next. It's, it's fight is not your fight. Um, and in Alicia, in response to you asking if they have any despair to come with you, they say no. It's fight is not your fight. They don't like to fight. They have given you as much information as they can, and they very much want you to go. Because <laughs> they, they, are, they are peaceful. They don't like outsiders. They had the exact same response to the dwarf that they met before you safety for secret there's all the short dudes the trees I'll be a bit more exp explicit um, uh, secrets of the tree for safety of the souls trust me you will get more information later. These guys, they don't know everything. They just had, they just had a trade um, that they accepted under um, duress in some ways. Um, but the terms of it were acceptable to them. Also, they didn't you get a sense of, again, I'm just going to go back to that 21 insight check. You get a sense of ignorance as well. Like they don't know about the poison. Um, 
and they don't know what this dwarf planned to do with what they gave away in the exchange. Can I offer myself as a fighter to them? You offer to, yeah, to, to, to fight for them, to, to do something in exchange. They are not interested in fighting. They, they don't want chaos. Thank them for their health. Yep, we thank them. We're respectful. Uh, you leave them in peace. Um, you kind of mentally apologize to the one that Mike took a bite of. <laughs> and apparently there's an ad break incoming. Sorry if you're not a subscriber. Um, and you turn and make your way in the direction. So we're looking for some kind of entrance way. Um, they're going to give you, they're going to give you a, like a little, um, it's going to be like a compass. They're going to give you, uh, this one item as you depart and it's like a compass, but it's all, it seems to be made of organic material. And because they can commune with other types of like fungal life forms, this compass can like hone in on the press, how they find each other and sense each other. It can hone in on like the closest fungus, um, around where this this thing is they kind of can keep tabs on the comings and goings of things it is how this other myconid that mike took a bite of that's why i had you roll a perception check to see if you could sense that you were being followed and watched by this myconid um because you came too close to where it lived um they've been keeping tabs and so you can use this little like organic fungal compass to kind of guide you um in the direction just to make it easier as well for storytelling purposes. I say if shit goes down, count on me. I love that, Roland. I love that. Oh, Rabinvara, I asked the tree if I can tie a tiny piece of my rope around one of its branches before we go to remember our newfound friendship by. Oh, I love that so much. Um, I'm going to have to have you roll for it because they're not going to let you approach the tree to touch it in any way, shape or form. So Ravenvara, can I please have a D20 persuasion check to see if you can persuade the myconids? How do I roll? Um, exclamation point, just all, all together, exclamation point, D20. And you'll get a randomly generated roll. You got it. Uh, thank you for demoing mans. That is a brilliant role. You should have saved that for later. Winnie's going to be annoyed. Um, <laughs> but uh, where is rolled a 10 plus our persuasion modifier. Charisma plus two is a 12. That is good enough. Um, because you are very, because you have been very peaceful this entire exchange. Very peaceful. Um, very respectful. Um, and so you communicate that all you want to do is <laughs> all you want to do is commune with the tree and thank it. And so you can't actually reach any, it's so big. You can't reach any of its branches, but you can approach the trunk and you can put your hands upon it. As you place your hands upon it, you feel this pulsating heartbeat from the tree reverberate through your body and you hear this like chorus of millions of souls like humming in your mind as you place your hands upon this tree it truly is housing souls you don't feel anything dark you don't these souls aren't in pain or screaming it's almost like a choir of just so many I would say voices but not but souls and you have this you just have this moment with the tree 
um, as you connect with it. I feel like we should be druid, but we are ranger, so we do have this connection with plants and animals inherently anyways. For those of you joining us, we are you are Sin, you are a tiefling wizard ranger um, at level 5. Three levels wizard, two levels ranger. Um, I love that Rav... Can I just call you Rav? I feel like... Rav Navara. Rav Navara. I could say that. Rav Navara. Rav is fine, lovely. Um, and you kind of, I guess you walk away with this understanding of why these myconids, if they can connect with this tree that way, um, and it can fill you with the, these, this feeling of like peace, why they would fight so hard. Or not fight, but do everything that they can, maybe resort to fighting last as a last measure to protect the tree and to to house these souls within it say sorry to the souls from the town Ali would you like to roll I, uh, what would it be nature Ali could you give me a d20 nature check and it's going to have to be high I'm sorry because this is hard what you're doing 13 plus 3 16 I'll give it to you as I thought 18 was too high before so with the 16 meets it beats it that's what I was going to set for it you reach out in amongst I'm telling you millions of souls and in your offering just just on the on a whim just you just extend an apology to the souls of Thornhaven that have been through everything almost like you just think of them in memory and a small part of the choir for a moment like a second gets louder and then disappears um no not the ones you shattered I'll just give that to you for free not the ones you killed they're not there. Can I just say, I know we've been on this exchange with the whole Mike and Colony and stuff for about an hour now. I have loved this so much. Um, I love the questions. I've loved having to come up. So for those of you who are joining us, this is apart from like the characters and some core characters this is completely improvised so it's a choose your own adventure where it's based on the decisions that you make i have a couple of like key milestones set for like a story um and depending on how you get to them everything is completely improvised and i have i have loved this exchange with the mycanid colony it's been lovely you don't know they're mycanids by the way you failed your history check they're just sentient mushrooms to you <laughs> <laughs> okay I thank the tree for this act of kindness and remark it is among the most honest and good natured beings I've come across in my travels with Jest also stating how we still might go on an adventure together somehow someday and I bid it farewell and with that oh thank you for gifting a sub thank you that's lovely thank you so much Welcome in, officials of the community. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the follow. <laughs> thank you, thank you. If you want to participate in any actual d and I'm just going to i just plug this like once or twice a, a stream. Um, feel free to uh, join us on the Discord. I do monthly one-shots, and it is first come, first served at my table. Anyone can play. But I find this is a really good way to kind of just introduce people to some of the basic mechanics of D&D &D without getting into like all the nitty gritty of character sheets and stuff. So I'm glad, I'm glad we're going. You can, so this is where we're at now. We had that nice little uh, extra moment with the tree. We've thanked the tree. We've thanked the myconids. We have our little like mushroom compass. <laughs> thank you for falling, Roland. Um, thank you so much. Welcome in. Uh, and then now we're going to depart. Now we do have this death countdown. I'm going to say again, this whole exchange took us an hour. 
uh, walking there, walking through the village of Mykonids, talking to the, um, talking to them. If we get to zero chat, we die. We are poisoned with the same poison that has been hurting the people of Thornhaven above. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> just in case we get close. I don't know if we will, but just in case we get close. Uh, and you will start to go crazy soon. Actually, because we've been poisoned for over a day now. How mean do I want to be, chat? Do we have... Are we suffering from the poisoned condition? Are we going to have disadvantage on all our attack rolls? I think that's pretty harsh. The last 24 hours we will. But every now and then, what I'm, this is what I'm going to do, chat. Off cam, down here, I'm going to roll every now and then. And if I roll below a certain number, we're going to have a moment of madness. Okay. And let's have one now as we leave the Mykonid colony. Ooh, lucky. You I rolled a 15. If we get, if I get below a certain number, we do something nuts. Okay. Cause we are slowly going mad. So we're going to traverse through the Underdark now and follow this. We're going to do some um, DM storytelling fuckery and truncate that period of time. Um, I'm going to get you guys to roll. Uh, a, uh, who hasn't rolled in forever? I think who's been rolling bad? Who needs redemption? Who hasn't rolled yet? I feel like... Sean, have you rolled recently? Sean, can I have an exclamation point D20 if you are still in chat? Drink. Oh, I'm running low. I've got a little bit of water left. Is that a no you don't want to roll? <laughs> five. All right. It's going to take you five hours to get to where you need to be that, no no that's okay you wanted to roll low no 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 you you want no 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 you wanted to roll low if you took you 20 hours you'd be fucked <laughs> this is good <laughs> this is good because this is the only way i can kill some of this timer <laughs> I'm a winner. <laughs> I'm gonna win a chicken dinner. <laughs> I forgot to mention it probably should have been a D10, but you know, maybe it took us 20 hours to get there. Okay, so we wander through the Underdark with Mike for five hours. Mike incessantly, mah, 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 mah. the whole time he's talking about how cool it'll be to be able to tell everybody he went on this adventure, that he's like a full blown adventurer now. Um, he's like, it's like, I'm so excited to be your sidekick. I never thought I'd be a sidekick for a real hero before. Any role I can do quick before I leave. Give me a perception check, Chris. Give me a perception check. <laughs> Send him home. So we're scanning. We're scanning the we're scanning around us. We've been walking for five hours. We're trying to find what looks to be uh, some kind of like cave opening. Roll the natural twenty right when you need it. Love it. Thank you. What a way to what a way to exit everybody. What a way to exit. That's amazing. Okay, cool. With a natural twenty, you find what you're looking for, which is exactly what we need. Death seems like a blessing if it gives us quiet from like <laughs> So you come to this, it's like it's an excavated um, entrance in a rock, in a rock formation. It's not like a rock wall, like a cave, because like I said, you're in an entirely new world here, but you see this like where it looks like a giant kind of like little mountainous hill 
um, of rock, like a, a entranceway has been carved out and you see um, a single torch stuffed in the ground um, and illuminating the entrance of the cave. It is the only source of firelight that you have come across in the Underdark. Everything else has been illuminated by um, the flora. And the, the compass starts to like vibrate in your hand. Um, like you have reached your destination. Hey, Meerkat. You're in the, you know, you're just two hours late. It's fine. Thank you, Chris. I'll see you next week for session zero. I'm so excited. Duck and I are talking about a few little changes to the project Zomboid server to make the grind a little less when characters die. That'd be so cool. That'd be really, really good. Especially for Allie, <laughs> if she ever dies. <laughs> Only two hours, it will forgive you. Better late than never. Okay. So you find your way at the entrance of this cave. It is been excavated out. You can see like bits of rock and stuff. So it hasn't always been there. You see, like I said, a torch with fire lit at its entrance way. At the entrance as well, you can see like, you know, broken things have been kind of just like thrown out of the entrance. You can see broken boxes and barrels and glass vials and things that have just kind of been like thrown and scattered, like not needed from within anymore. Um, what would you like to do, chat? <laughs> Here you go. It's not going to be the book or anything, but just things like an event on the weekend where we'll make it faster to level, faster to read. Could you could you do this? Um, you learn faster while sitting on the floor? Could we not just make it faster to level in general, just with like there's a mod where if you sit while you read a book, you read faster? Can we listen at the entrance? Oh, hold on. Don't vote. I'll get rid of send mic inside. That was a bit of a dumb one. Okay, here you go. Type one if you want to try and stealthily sneak inside. Type two if you want to listen at the entrance for noises coming from within. Uh, type three if you want to inspect more about the broken objects outside that have been shattered to kind of give you an idea of what might be inside um or four if you just want to shout out shout into the shout into the cave if chaos reigns all right we've got we've got a spread who voted to shout out <laughs> alicia i think alicia would always play chaos <laughs> Uh, the, the votes are in. The votes are in. We're going to listen at the entrance. Okay. Uh, seeing as though... Um, number two who voted... To Ali. Can I have an exclamation point D20 for you for another uh, perception check to try and hear... What's going on inside the cave? We gotta add our wisdom modifier. It's a plus one. An eleven, so with a twelve. <laughs> with a twelve. Aw, thank you for the race sub. Eleven months, let's go. Thank you so much for the race sub, Mia Cat. <laughs> Almost twelve. Wow. Time, huh? I've had this little angel girl, this my little kitty, just sleeping here beside me the whole time. I've just been playing with her feet. <laughs> it's not a three. No, with a 12. With a 12, you could hear some stuff. You hear, like, the chinking of glass. And you hear, like, what sounds like... Like the, the, the dull thud of something blunt being beaten upon something. There is some... You know, and maybe a little bit of uh, a metal grinding. Maybe if you listen really, really carefully, you can hear something bubbling. There is some kind of... You probably can deduce that there's some kind of work taking place inside. There's definitely something inside, but it's not breathing or growls or claws. It feels more like 
tinkering. You hear tinkering coming from within, within the cave. Now that you've heard this tinkering, what are you going to do? Type 1, if you're going to head inside. Type 2, if you want to inspect some of the objects around the, the front of the cave. Type 3, if you want to shout out, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hey, Aura. I'm actually out of liquids. I should get some more, but I'm out of liquids. I'll get them in a minute. You and the dunny. Oh, I love this formula. I'm just giving you the same options until obviously something happens, right? Okay, I love this. Look at the story crafting you guys are doing. So you're inspecting, you, you hear tinkering. And so now you're like, what could they possibly be tinkering on? And you look and, and you look at all the, the, the broken, discarded objects at your feet. Can I, I, can I give you some liquids? I, I'll get some water in a minute. Um, thank you, my love. <laughs> Hi. Good. No, no, no. Give the people what they want. Pull that down. Sexy chest. <laughs> okay. A drink redeemed. I think I got one from Alicia too. Thanks, baby. Okay. You look down at the, at the, the broken objects before you and you kind of see what looks to be, um, wait, give me an investigation check. Marble. Exclamation point D20, please, for an investigation check while we kind of rummage as quietly as possible through all of the broken objects and everything outside. I think there's going to be a chapter nine. <laughs> I need to start my campaign next week. <laughs> you rolled a nine. Um, plus what do we have to miss? Plus three to investigation. So that becomes a 12, which again is not bad. It'll give you some info. Okay. So because you yourself are a wizard, um, also a ranger, you kind of understand certain instruments and you look down and you see that these, there are glass vials and tubes. It, to the layman's eyes, it would look like just a chemistry set, right? Like chemistry types of materials and everything. There are also like boxes, ripped rags and sheets, but because of your studying of magic, you know that these specific types of vials and the specific types of like broken equipment um, is used in magical chemistry. It's like it's used in alchemy. So that gives you some information about the type of thing that might be inside and what they've been tinkering and doing. If we just connect some dots real quick, someone's been messing around with alchemy. There is a poison substance in the water. Um, also by this cave, the, the water is only like about a hundred feet away. Um, you're probably, you're probably at the source. Maybe, 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 but with only a 12, um, you can't, you don't really notice anything more about what may have been in these vials. <laughs> no worries. I've also just say I disable trigger fire for these streams as well. Even though we can't see the game, this is so fun. Yeah, it's all it's all of the mind. Okay, chat. Are we gonna head inside? You basically have two options. You know that you need to make you need to make communication or at least spy or something on whatever's inside. Yeah, you can shout out to try and draw out whatever's inside or you can go in. Do you want it to come out or you to go in? Basically one, if you want to shout out hello or anything like that type two, if you want to go in, it comes out, you go in. Something has to happen here. It's like an audio book. It's, it's interactive story. Alicia wants to shout. <laughs> <laughs> my chaotic queen you want to surprise our friend 
Okay, for those of you, again, who haven't joined us in previous episodes, we are wearing um, medium armor, um, but we are wearing half plate. We're wearing half plate, so all of our stealth checks are rolled with disadvantage. So we're going to have to sneak, and we're going to have to roll to see how stealthy we are with disadvantage. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, who who wants to be in the hot seat? Meerkat, welcome in. Would you like to roll me an exclamation point d20 twice? So you're going to have to wait like five seconds to be able to do it twice in chat. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Dude. Can you please roll me an exclamation point d20 for a stealth check? Ask someone else. All right. One from Marble, um, a.k.a. Horror, and one from Sean. Whoever rolled the lowest is what we're going for. Let's go. Exclamation point D20, one from Marble, one from Sean, and the lowest is what we're going for. 18. Oh, Meerkat. Bad luck. <laughs> Bad luck. <laughs> uh. Sean, can you do worse than a five? Sorry, Meerkat, you said no. 18! Holy shit, the first, good, like, so few good rolls. Yeah, so basically when you roll a d20, you can get score anywhere from one to 20. Um, these are for standard checks. For uh, things like combat, we roll different dice. So I might ask for a d8 or a d4 or a d10, depending on damage rolls. I have a feeling we might be getting to some combat soon because uh, you're not being quiet. Um, in Dungeons and Dragons with the standard d20, you're obviously going to do better the higher you get, so the closer you get to 20. If you roll a 20, it's called a critical success. So with a critical success, you get the best possible outcome that you could ask for in that situation. If you roll a critical one or a natural one, which is the lowest you can roll, you will get not only not what you want, but something actively bad is going to happen to you. And then everything is kind of shades in between, depending on where the DM sets a roll. Um, for particular checks, if they're challenging, for example, like if you want to seduce a mushroom, um, I'm going to set that difficulty at an 18, which means that if you want to be able to do it, you need to roll an 18, 19 or a 20 plus any mods, because that should be something that should be very difficult to do. If it's something like picking a lock, I might just make it a standard 10. So you just want to get above a 10 in order to be able to do it. So it's 50, 50 chance. There's my rundown. Ah, it's all good. It's all good. This is kind of like a bastardized view because like I said, um, version of it because this is like a choose your own adventure. But anyways, let's not hide from the fact that you rolled <laughs> a five <laughs> plus one, a six. Let me roll for Mike as well. You turn around to Mike and you're like, let's go. Shh. Low. Let's go. We're going inside. How does Mike do? <laughs> Mike rolled a five as well. <laughs> oh, you're both going to make some noise. Um, okay, so you both kind of get down low um, and start making your way inside the cave. You're hugging the side of the walls. You're trying to be really careful not to kind of tread on any of the broken glass, not to kind of bump anything as you as you weave your way inside. You kind of see a glow, again, a yellow glow, firelight at, uh, at an entrance kind of around a, a point where the, the tunnel kind of curves. And as you approach it, with a stealth of five, you both kind of at the same time like slip on a little bit of rock that makes a little bit of a crunching noise and you both freeze to see if anything emerges from the end of the cave. You wait for like half a minute and nothing happens. But you have made a noise 
and you continue around the corner. Now, before with that perception check, like I said, you heard tinkering, you heard bubbling and and um, glass being moved around and that kind of stuff. As you come around the corner, you see this little, you see this little like, it's like, it's like a single room living quarters it's been hollowed out in the stone there's still little bits of like rock that have been kind of pushed aside um, on the sides of the walls they were also on the side of the um like the long rocky hallway that you kind of walked down it's what you slipped on as you made noise you don't see anything you don't see anyone but you know someone to be here there's kind of a little um there's like a single door on the side that looks like it's been pushed up against something that's kind of been burrowed out in the side of the wall. So it looks like there's one kind of adjacent room, but you can kind of see it doesn't fit perfectly on on the door. And there's like a little bit of a blue glow coming from behind it. But you kind of see in the center of this room, this like um, this table that's made of rock the same rock as the walls and on, on in front of it you see this alchemy giant alchemy set you see on the other set other side of behind it um like books kind of been scattered on this makeshift shelf that's been dug out of the rock um books have been opened and turned you kind of see like a, a opened bedroll very meager living conditions uh, like a, a bedroll and a very simple pillow um you know, a bucket full of full of water, um, some like scraps of food, uh, you know, satchels and stuff around, but nothing living, and nothing that you can see. What are you going to do, chap? What are you going to do? There are candles lit, like our torches have been like embedded into the walls and they're lit to like, I don't know, the room is quite bright. The room is quite bright. What do you want to do? So number one, you can take a step into the room and try to inspect the alchemy set. Two, you could find somewhere to hide there are some bookshelves, there are some crates. You know, it's 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 a medium-sized room. Three, you could simply call out, I know you're here, because it's gone quiet and somebody was just here, right? Something. Four, there's a one door on the other side of the room. It's, it's not quite on the other side, like it's you got the alchemy set in the middle, towards the back on one side, you've got like it looks like shelving. Um, a crudely made bookcase, um, some boxes, um, and then like papers and books and diagrams. Also on the wall, someone has like pinned up alchemical diagrams on the wall. And then on the other side, you've kind of got like this living area that's all open, like it's a single room. And then you have the door next to it and then maybe some more crates and barrels. And it's kind of this big, big circular room. Oh, we're getting a mix of votes. Oh, getting a mix of votes. I love this. We have a tie. We need, we need a tiebreaker. We do need someone to come along and break the tie. <laughs> Somebody come in and pick number three. <laughs> would anyone, would any beautiful lurkers like to uh, give us, give us a vote, a deciding vote between one and three. If no one votes, you, you guys do know it comes down to a coin toss and it becomes completely random. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back, see if you can get somebody to, to fix the vote. I'll be like 30 seconds. <laughs> you guys explain what she's voting for. <laughs> it's a unicorn, no context. We need someone to break the vote, otherwise I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a heads or tails. Um, hurry, Marble, you can do it, you can do it too. So between one and three is what we're voting for. What do we do? So we've just found the den of some of something and I've explained the room, but there's a chemistry set in the middle of the room. Oh, oh, okay. Inspect the chemistry set. <laughs> Someone wanted three. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, Roland, I just closed it, but I think we would have still had, it was nine to seven. <laughs> Emma, 
good people. All right, so what you're going to do is we're going to tell Mike to stay in the entrance of the cave. Let's say this room is 30 feet by 30 feet just to kind of give it give it a nice breadth of space because it's a living quarters, right, for somebody. We walk inside and we walk up to the chemistry set. It's about, it's in the middle of the room. It's like 15 feet. <laughs> to the opposite of what Mia Cat says. <laughs> um, and you, you again, you, you, you creep and you're trying to get a sense of, okay, there was somebody here. Maybe they're behind the door. Did they hear me? I'm not quite sure. And you approach this chemistry set and it is, it is very crude. It is very crude. It's not like the beautiful um, glass vials that you're used to to working with as you were learning and harnessing your magic abilities. You, they're they're very. They've been they've been made by someone with with rough hands, right? Maybe maybe the type of creature that might be used to working with stone rather than glass. I don't know. Uh, so you approach this chemistry set and dun, 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 dun. who voted for it way back who voted for it way back Chris can I have an exclamation point d20 investigation check as you start to investigate the various things you can see tubes of like a liquid going into different to different vials they seem to shift and change color you can see like um, powdery substances in, in, in vials in front of you. You can see a couple of, a couple of different types of potions with lids upon them. And you're, you're searching, you're trying to search through and try to make sense of what this is that you're watching. A 14 plus we are proficient. No, we're not proficient in investigation. Um, wait, I'm looking at Mike. I thought we were plus three to investigation. That's really good. Right, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's a really good check. All right, we're gonna notice a couple of things. Our eyes are gonna just suddenly get drawn to this collection of potions on the side of the room and you're going to notice that one of them is a potion of greater healing, all right? So the first thing you do, you're kind of trying to make out all these different chemicals, but you spot one that you instantly know that that red liquid looks exactly like a healing potion and you're going to grab it and pocket it. So we now have a potion of greater healing in our inventory. With a 17 as well, we're looking at the substances and we see something that looks very similar to something that we've seen before. And we pull out, as we, pu as we pocket the potion of greater healing, we pull out the little vial of, of poison substance that we extracted from our own blood and we hold it up to this one it's a giant a giant this one's like a giant um what are they called i don't know my different types of like chemistry flasks but one of the big round boldy ones is full of whatever this tiny little speck we extracted from our blood is and we hold them up and with a 17 we know that they're the same conical flask demijohn i don't know it's chemist warehouse. <laughs> yeah, one of those big round kind of vials. I'm gonna start wrapping up at about two, but we're, we're really onto something good. And as you hold it up, you hear a voice, not like the one in your head, an actual voice within the room. Go, you're too late. And you stop and you look around you and you see no one. And Mike gasps. <gasps> Who's there? Who's there? And he pulls out, he's he's gonna he's gonna pull out his little bow and arrow, and he and he's he's terrified. And he's just, you know, he's kind of aiming it all around the room, but there's nothing that he can see. And we're gonna draw our weapon. Um, well, we don't really have, we, we, we've got our quarter staff, right? So we ready our quarter staff. We're a wizard. All right, so we've got a potion of great. We've also got a dagger, but no, we're just going to kind of ready our quarter staff. We, we put that, we quickly put the vial away. We, we ready our quarter staff. Right? You're going to blow, <laughs> blow the voice a kiss and you get shot again. Oh God. Hey demons, it's your boy. So this voice calls out to us. You're too late. 
I love that. Show yourself, coward. I know it's you. Why? Why are you torturing the people of Thornhaven? And yeah, in a sultry tone, I come here. <laughs> All right, chat gets to vote. Here we go. I always sometimes I forget to let you guys vote. Do you want to, do you want to uh, address him aggressively? Let's let's just roll time back like two seconds. You've got your quarter staff out there, right? Are we going to talk to him aggressively? Are we going to try and hey, buddy, seduce him? Because apparently that's something that um. <laughs> Roland likes to do <laughs> seduce everything or three are we going to kind of act like we accidentally stumbled in here and we don't know what we're doing even though we literally just pulled out a vial just means the check's going to be high um and did a comparison aggression okay we do exactly that we do exactly that though show yourself coward he doesn't it doesn't the voice goes my work is almost complete I made my bargain. I'm in the process of getting what I want. There's nothing that you can do to me. Sean, that's exactly what I was gonna, okay. It's funny, I think about what I would do as a player all the time and usually I, I'm like, mm, I don't wanna guide them too much. I won't make it an option or I'll just kind of hide it amongst other options. But Sean, you and I are on the exact same page. Not that that should in any way, in any way influence how you guys vote. What are you gonna do now? He hasn't revealed himself. Are you gonna try and threaten him? We'll roll an intimidation check. Two, are you gonna to try to appeal to his sense of mercy? Maybe there's some goodness. We don't know what his motivations are and why he's doing this. Um, we haven't a thousand percent confirmed it's him, but we're pretty sure. Three, we'll attempt to side with him. We're arcane after all. Maybe we can convince him that we think what he's doing is pretty cool. Maybe we wanna get in on it and he's read us completely wrong this whole time. Three, we could retaliate and see if he'll show himself if we smash his fucking chemistry set. Maybe he won't like that and he'll show himself. These are, these are all fun options, by the way. Threaten him. Think about that though, chat, that's what it's winning. I'm gonna ask you how you're going to threaten an invisible person. What are you going to threaten him with? Looks like we're going with threatening. Okay, how are you going to threaten him, chat? I will leave this in your hands. How are we threatening him? And then we're gonna roll an intimidation check to see if it's successful or not. Tell the invisible person that my own schemes are far more impressive that I may just take credit for their work. <gasps> if they prefer to stay hidden, that is pretty cool. Winnie says, if he doesn't show himself, I will love for a powder like thing and blow it all around. You'll find powder and blow it around. You just fuck up his experiment. Or we could pick up the spherical flask of, of the liquid, the poison, and dangle it. Now, this is really interesting. Because if you pick up the spherical flask and dangle it like you're threatening to smash it, it is full of poison. You are already poisoned. Mike isn't. What would unleashing this poison do? Would you actually break it? make him think we're tougher than we are fuck mike i cast a fireball <laughs> or i just go all right well we're gonna make a threat first and roll an intimidation check to see if we're successful right dc 15 so this guy's pretty intimidating himself um i'm gonna go with ravnas I'm gonna, I'm gonna combine, I'm gonna combine, I'm gonna combine them. So you go and you grab the giant spherical flask and you hold it in your hands, right? It's full of, it's full of the substance, a substance, right? Part, it's part of this chemistry set. And you are going to tell him that you have your own schemes that are far more impressive and you might take credit for his work. Um, 
if he doesn't reveal himself right now and that you know where he got that you know where he got this substance from and so he believes you you tell him the the twilight tree you say I know you got this from the twilight tree and now I know the source of it perhaps I can make a superior version myself unless you care to bargain and let's roll an intimidation check because it could be persuasion but I'm we're gonna we're, we're threatening ultimately at the end of the day Rav, can you please roll me a exclamation point d20 for a uh, intimidation check? We get a plus two because of our charisma modifier. Mm, Ali, let's work that into some dialogue. I love that. Rolled an 11 plus two is a 13. I said it had to be a 15. So it's not, it's not completely, it's not completely successful. Um, but you do hear a voice say you don't know what you're dealing with do you even know what you're holding in your hands do you know how to use it if you drop that on the ground you're as good as dead and so is your friend to which you respond as Ali says I'm already <laughs> Joke's on you, buddy. I'm already poisoned. I have nothing to lose anymore. The only person in this situation with something to lose is you. If it means killing Mike, then yes. <laughs> Get our tits out, oh my god. I don't have time for games. Aim a scorching ray at his lab. I don't really care about what you do down here. I just need to cure myself. Okay, all right, so we're gonna, it seems, it seems overwhelmingly like chat wants to, um, wants, wants to go a bit, a, a bit as you guys do just burn it all down all right so you're gonna hold up the flask you're gonna hold up the flask and you're gonna ready your quarter staff right and you're gonna say I don't have time for games I have come a long way and I have endured so much and if I die in the process, so be it. But you best believe I am taking you with me, no matter what it takes. And you're going to ready a scorching ray. You're going to turn around, and are we going to are we going to whisper? Are we going to tell Mike to run chat? Quick yes or no question. Scorching ray at the ready vial of this substance from the tree that is part of the alchemical formula right we don't necessarily know that it is the poison itself but it is a core ingredient that we are assuming is poisonous uh, we haven't run any successful checks on it um we don't know the source of the voice in the room do you want to tell mike to run a bunch of people saying no. Yes, Mike, run. All right. It seems to be overwhelmingly yes to Mike to run. You're going to turn around. Because all this is just taking a couple of seconds. You're going to turn around and, and be like, Mike, run. And as you, as you say those words, a small figure appears behind Mike in the doorway. Um... I'm going to be fair. What does he have in his inventory? Okay. With a dagger. Mike's just been standing there, like, just watching. You know, uh, sorry, he's got his short bow at the ready. And this arm, this thick, dark-skinned arm, has a knife at his throat and is standing behind him. If you guys want to see the form, I can't believe no one's done this already. You can see it in my title, exclamation point, Goman. This is your meat shield. 
he that that's what he looks like um you can see it in the title of chat exclamation point go men you will see uh what he looks like just imagine a dagger in his hand um in his empty hand at mike's throat he is the short dwarven figure that the mike and it's told us about that we have been chasing if you want to see what mike looks like or uh fully what sin exclamation point mike or exclamation point sin then you'll also see what they look like um well you might have your own vision in your mind what they look like but you see this this uh uh Dwega dwarf um dark skinned um muscly he's got a uh, patchy leather armor on in one hand he holds a staff and at the top is a shard a crystalline blue shard that looks exactly like what has been growing in the heads of infected people and with his other meaty arm he stands still about a foot taller than mike he's a halfling but mike's a child um with a dagger at mike's throat mike's a cutie yeah mike for those of you who don't know about mike much because you haven't joined us at the beginning mike is only about like 10 years old <laughs> Uh, we can't pull out. We would have got a quarter staff roll in one hand and a vial of this stuff in the other. And uh, the Dwegar turns to you and says, you might be willing to sacrifice your own life, but are you willing to sacrifice his? What do you do, chat? What are you going to do? All right, these are some options I think that we can use. Russian roulette. <laughs> All right, we can put our weapons down. Yeah, surrender to save Mike. We've, we've prepared a scorching ray. We could, we could still fire it at him knowing that um, Mike might catch some in the crossfire. We can just respond by saying, we don't care about Mike. Do what you want with him. Meh. Four, as some people have suggested in chat, well, we can throw the glass vial in our hand. We can still throw it and try to call his bluff. I mean, we're really calling his bluff, but we can just try to poison everybody in the room. Five, we can try to roll some kind of persuasion or deception check and try to bargain. Lay down our weapons, cast a scorching ray, um, tell him you don't care about Mike, see what happens. Uh, you could throw the vial in our hand and break it, or we can try to bargain. It looks like we're going, no worries, Winnie. Thank you so much for coming through. I hope you've had fun. Um, it looks like we're gonna cast a scorching ray. It looks like we're gonna cast a scorching ray. Holy shit. All right, you guys, because we've ready the action and we are ready to go. So it's easy. I'm not going to have any illusions about this. Goman has an armor class of 15. Yeah, so if you haven't played D&D &D before, what, you have, what we do when we cast a spell that has to hit, we roll to hit. If our number is higher than the class of armor that they have on, we then get to roll for damage. Yeah, and at Scorching Ray, we get to cast uh, scorching ray is uh, i should have explained this too three kind of rays of fire yeah and we we roll three times for all three to hit next time on shards of the abyss Havana the battle we've still got we've still got half hour guys we still got half hour I also I also love that we've now gone like fuck any more information we're just gonna fight him but we'll see what happens because he was invisible which let me mark off um, all right scorching ray for him to release Mike for him for these scorching rays to have impacted him enough to release Mike at least two of the three have to hit. At least two of the three have to hit. All right. Um, it seems like we're getting into battle, you guys. So let's kind of... 
get our battle music on, yeah? <laughs> it's getting spicy. Okay, can I please get an exclamation point D20 from who wants, who wrote, who said they wanted to hit? He's, he's visible now. He's not invisible anymore. All right, Hora, can I get a D20 from you? Ali, can I get a D20 from you? Uh, Sean, can I get a D20 from you? You all have to beat 15 for any of these rays to hit. Where is my, where is my pen so I can record what we're doing? So I need to do it all manually. Ali has rolled a nine, it doesn't hit. Hara has rolled a seven, it doesn't hit. Sean has rolled a 19, it hits. One of our three scorching rays hits. So we are so, we are being so careful. Oh my God, red ink everywhere. We are being so careful not to hit Mike. Do I have anything to wipe this on? I don't. Ugh, a towel. Lily, now's not the time, baby. We're fighting, we're fighting. Um, <laughs> I got hit. <laughs> All right, uh, Sean, can you please roll me? We're gonna roll for damage. Um, unfortunately, Mike has not been released um, in this grip, but we were so careful not to hit Mike with our scorching rays because we didn't want to hurt our little friend. Oh my God, I've got, <laughs> fingers have gone all red. <laughs> this pen, this pen is shit. Lily, now's not the time, babes, to want attention. Mum's in the middle of combat. <laughs> I need two D6s. Can I get one D can I get a D6 from who didn't roll? Um, one D6 from Chris. One D6 from Alicia, please. I summoned Puss in Boots! Two. Unfortunately, he doesn't drop Mike in shock. And a one. Oh, only three. All right, we do three points of fire damage and we burn our first spell slot. All right, we had six. Uh, we had seven, you guys. Now we have six spells left we can cast before we need to take a long rest. Um, and we only do three points of damage to our dwarven friend. We go, but the third one kind of gets him in like the shoulder, but it doesn't burn too much. His armor kind of singes a little bit and maybe he takes a little bit of burn on his shoulder. As you hit, you guys, you got, anybody who knows, is the music too loud? Let me turn that down. Is that better? For, for any of you who know my D&Ds, bad shit happens like all the time and I, you know, Duck told me last week that I was pretty dark. Um, he doesn't let go. He doesn't uh, let go of Mike. But as he takes this third one in the shoulder blade, he is going to fall back with the force of it. And he is going to draw his blade across Mike's throat as he stumbles backwards. I'm not gonna roll to hit. His dagger is literally right at Mike's throat. I am just rolling straight damage. Oh, he is so lucky. He is so lucky for four. All right, doesn't go fully deep, but he takes four points of slashing damage as this dagger, as our Dwegar dwarf falls backwards and he cuts along Mike's throat as he gets kind of pushed backwards a couple of feet. Mike Mike drops his bow and arrow and kind of goes down and clutches his throat. It isn't a deep cut. He hasn't cut any veins. He's only done four points of damage, but Mike is now bleeding. Remember, he's much weaker than us. Mike is now bleeding from, his, from a cut along his neck. Sorry, guys, you know how it is, like... <laughs> <laughs> when you play with me. <laughs> Can I angle my cleavage at a better view for him and say, drop him, it's all yours? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so Mike is down. Um, he takes this singe to the side. Uh, he doesn't immediately attack you yet. We're not fully in. We're not fully in initiative, everybody. He is going to go. You fool! You don't know what you're doing. My work is almost complete. You can't. This is fruitless. I will give you one chance to leave the way you came. Not for you, sweetheart. I will give you one chance to leave the way you came. And take your pitiful, bleeding companion with you. What, do you, what are some things you want to do, chat, at this point? Here you go. Here are your options. Number one. You take this moment out of uh, before combat is initiated to ask him why. Ask what his plans are. Say all you want is information and then you will go. Two. Fuck this guy. You're going to try to scorch him again. Let's burn another spell slot to do so. Three. We're going to get ourselves ready for a fight. We don't care what this guy has to say. We are down for a fight, but instead of being aggressive, we're going to be defensive in our actions. Four. We've got this vial of stuff. We're gonna throw it and see what it does. Mike is only a couple of feet down on the ground, bleeding in front of this guy. He's not out of the fight yet. Um, and the Druga is in the, the Dwega is in the doorway between you and the exit of the cave. Could I experiment with ice and poison? Uh, yeah. If we throw the vial, I guess we could do something. Mike stands up and says, "'Tis but a flesh wound, for I am Mike the Mighty, AKA Mike the Meat Shield, and I will defend you, fine princess." Oh, what's he call us? He calls us his damsel in distress because he saved us one time chat if you weren't here for an earlier episode. All right, we have ties, we have ties. We need somebody to break the tie. Oh. Alicia's done it. Mike the motherfucker. <laughs> you guys are gonna throw the vial. We're gonna we're gonna throw this vial. We're gonna lob it. And we're gonna try not to hit Mike in the process. Um, we're gonna try and lob it so it falls over the Dwegar's shoulder and hits the entranceway and kind of shatters behind him into him. And we're hoping that that gives Mike enough room. Um, to kind of scamper, to kind of, you know, scamper away. Remember, all this is happening very, very quickly. Um, but we're going to have to do an athletics check. A strength check, an athletics check to see how well we lob this thing. Um, Sean, because you never voted, uh, can I have an exclamation point D20 from you um, to lob, to successfully lob you? It's got to be to 12 to lob this behind the Dwegar so it doesn't smash near Mike. It smashes like a foot or two behind the Dwegar. Rolled an 18 plus one, 19, let's go. Yes, finally, all right. With, with perfect technique, you lob this, this vial behind and it smashes on the ground um, behind him and this like gray, blue mist just starts to like fill up and pour behind the room the um the Dwega shouts you fool you don't know what you've done and I am going to need uh oh, I'm gonna need Mike to roll a dexterity saving throw to try and get out of the way of the dust okay would someone like to roll a dexterity saving throw for Mike who wasn't uh, so sorry I don't know who who hasn't rolled? I just go for who's been active in chat recently. Um, Chris, please, yes, roll me a, a dexterity saving throw f on Mike's behalf, please. A d20. He gets a plus six to his dexterity saving throw, so you don't have to roll high. Roll the 12 and 18. Amazing. So you, you and Mike have this, you know, you formed a little bit of a kinship over the course of the time. You throw this vial, it crashes. The Dwegar screams, you fool, you don't know what you're doing. Mike 
even though he is bleeding, kind of grabs his gear and does like this perfect like triple tumble on the ground and um, you know, rolls into your feet 15 feet into the room beside you, kind of like gets up holding his throat. And it is the two of you facing the Dwegar, this smoke in the corridor coming. Now, as, as it shatters, all of those beautiful choral voices that you heard when you put your hands on the Twilight Tree earlier this episode seem to sing. What did you play with Mum's die for? He seemed to sing and call whatever this substance was it is what he traded for it is a key a chemical ingredient that this drow needed this drow this dwega needed in his um the poison that he was concocting it is not the poison itself it is just a key ingredient in his process but as it smashes all these voices all these essences of souls um, start to sing and they are going to do psychic damage. They're going to do psychic damage, which I am going to roll uh, off to oh, <laughs> this Dwegar. This Dwegar is so lucky. So because he's been working, he's had spillages, he's accidentally come into contact with details. He has um, stuff, he's got a natural resistance. Dwegar actually has um, a natural resistance to... Oh no, that's poison, not psychic damage. He's only going to take three points of psychic damage because he's buffed himself up. Luckily, Mike is taking none. I rolled 2d8, so a three on 2d8 is very low. Um, and you're not going to take either as this kind of mist kind of sings, comes out, gives him some psychic damage on the way and then starts to like dissipate into vapours. I still have the pole up. Amazing. The Dwegar is going to kind of reel a little bit from it and then straighten back up and be like, if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you're going to get. And now we are officially in initiative. We're going to roll for an initiative order. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, we have a um, battle is turn-based. So we roll for a sequence of turns. Um... Roland, can I get a D20 from you to determine Sin's initiative order? Uh, oh, me cat's lurking. Um, Ali, can I get a... Did I get you to roll recently? No. Can I get a D20 from you for Mike's initiative order? And then I'm going to roll for our Dwegar not friend. So he rolled a 16. We rolled a two. Okay, it's gonna go the Dwegar, then Mike, and then you. <laughs> With a two. <laughs> An 11. Uh, okay, and the Dwegar rolled a 16. Amazing. He goes, if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you're gonna get. He is going to cast a spell called Arms of Hadar at you. And within the mics next to you, he's going to center it on the two of you. You see the, sh the crystal shard at the top of his staff start to glow with all of his, um, his arcane energy. Um, and he is going to whip it up and push it down into the ground. And as he hits it into the ground, all these black, like inky, um, octopus looking tentacles are going to sprout up from the ground, 10 feet of ground surrounding you and Mike all goes inky black and these arms erupt out and they're going to try and swing at both you and Mike. And we need to make strength saving throws to try and dodge these tentacles as they erupt out of the ground. Um, Alicia, are you still here, lovely? Would you like to roll me um, a strength saving throw, a d20 strength saving throw for Sin to see if we can dodge? We need to get above a 13. A six. With a six, we do not successfully be able to react in time, um, but we also need to see if Mike makes it. Has anybody not rolled in a while? I know Meerkat's gone, um, Winnie's gone, Horror's gone. 
Um, Mans is getting ready. Oh, Mans has rolled it, and he's rolled a seven. <laughs> IRL. <laughs> So with the six and the seven, both you and Mike do not dodge these inky tendrils as they come at you. And now I'm going to roll two d6s worth of necrotic damage. Nine. We're both taking nine points of necrotic damage. With this, Mike, who is still bleeding from his, his throat, an inky tendril wraps around his tiny little halfling body and flings him across the ground as it whacks him with such thudding force and he kind of rolls he like rolls like five feet bang down into the ground and he i'm telling he, chat you know how many times mike has gone down he's not dead he's not unconscious but he is he it's his turn next and he is going to struggle to do anything effectively now because he is so low on hit points let me also deduct nine from ours which takes us to what 27 all right we now have twit that's a seven not a one that we now have 27 hit points left um is he gonna move? No. I think he's gonna stay blocking the corridor. Um, and no, he's not gonna take a bonus action. Okay, it is Mike's turn. <laughs> Save Mike. Mike on the ground, this inky tendril having whacked him down, um, is gonna try and kind of get back up. And as he gets back up, he's going to grab one of his daggers and he is going to try and throw it at the Dwager. He's just going to try. He's trying to get up. And he's going to try and throw it at the Dwager with like the last fighting bit of energy that he has left. And would someone like to roll to hit for Mike? Roland, can I get a D20 from you to see if on behalf of Mike you can hit? Have to go a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm feeling fine. Yeah. Roland, would you like to? Oh, a twelve. Um, plus, what's what's he got? A plus to his daggers. Uh, he's got a plus six. Amazing, that beats 15, so his dagger, because he is a rogue, um, his dagger reigns true. <laughs> we both are wearing black and red. <laughs> um, his dagger rings true and it hits, it hits, it hits him kind of in the stomach and we need to do 1d4 plus four's worth of damage. I'll roll that, it's a three plus four, he's gonna do seven points of damage, which is amazing to this Dwega. Uh, I don't believe Mike has any potions or anything. Nope, he is just going to kind of throw it and he's just gonna back up a little bit till he's up against the wall. He's maybe about 20 feet away. He's now out of the inky black um, tentacles. It is our turn. It is our turn. All right, so we have distant, distance combat, everybody. We are not able to take a, a reaction, so we could not cast Hellish Rebuke because Arms of Hadar nullifies our ability to take reactions that round. So we have Hellish, Re Hellish Rebuke up our sleeve as a spare action at some point. But these are our options for distance. He's about 15 feet away from us. Vote one if you want to cast a firebolt. Vote two if you want to cast a ray of frost, which is an icy ray. Three if you want to cast scorching ray. We, caught, we cast that earlier. That is three rays of fire. We have to roll for all three to hit. I did that, but really it's three. Shatter. We can cast shatter in the, in the 
like right in front of him basically and try to explode everything around him. Um, sleep, we can try to put him to sleep if he has less hit points than what we're able to roll for. All right, so that is a chance. Or six, we can take a defensive action and we can cast blur upon ourselves, which makes us really hard to hit when he attacks next um, and gives him disadvantage in all of his attack rolls. You guys just love setting shit on fire. This entire season has just been you guys setting shit on fire. <laughs> if he's not hostile, that is correct. But he is. <laughs> All right. It looks like we're going to try and scorching ray him again. Right on my fingers. Burn him burn him all. All right. The first three people to do. All right. Can I get a D20 from Alicia, a D20 from Chris and a D20 from Sean? Let's see how many of our scorching rays hit. You need to beat 15. Uh, the Mike's hit points. I can tell you Mike's hit points. I cannot tell you the bad's hit points. I am not. I will not tell you. An 11, a 12, and a 15. What's our spell casting bonus? It's a, ah, oh, it's a plus. All right, all three of them hit. All three of them hit because we get to add our spell, what's it called? Spell attack bonus. Haha, <laughs> because see, if you knew how many hit points the bad had, then you could be like, oh, it's fine. I've almost killed him, but I'm not going to let you know. <laughs> All right, Ali, can I please get two D6s? Uh, this is going to be a lot of rolls, everybody. It's the accumulation of all of them. Ali, can I get two D6s from you? Um, Roland, can I get two D6s from you? Who else is here and hasn't rolled recently? As in, you'll have to you have to put it in chat twice. I think everybody else has lurked or dropped off. A two and a four. All right, so your ray does six points of damage. Roland, and a second one, please. I need two D6s from you. So a six plus a five. And um, Alicia, can I get another two D6s from you? This is gonna be a buttload of damage. And two. So that's 13. Another five, wow. 15, 16, that's 18 points of damage. And we just need one more roll from Roland. So we needed you to roll the D6 twice. This is a huge amount of damage. Four for 22 points of fire damage. <laughs> oh my God. You go, I'm sick of saving this halfling's life. And all three hit and his leather armor starts to singe and burn and smell disgusting. Um, the, the amount of like fire damage that this, this guy takes his staff, like starts to char a little bit. The, um, the, the, sh the crystal shard on the, on the top of his quarter staff, like starts to like blacken and go sooty and, and like kind of burn hot as you do 22 points of fucking fire damage with all three scorching rays hitting that is huge that is absolutely huge oh amazing good job you think you've redeemed don't fuck with mike <laughs> amazing um cool uh i am gonna say we're kind of gonna stay put where we are, hold on, De Goman's spell. That's just for the one round. Yeah, that's just for the one round, the arms of Hadar. Okay, so you singe this guy and in response, he is going to grab his quarterstaff and he is going to hurl a chaos bolt, right? Not at you, not at you though, chat. He hurls a chaos bolt 
of um, force energy. So a chaos bolt is a uh, undulating, warbling mass of chaotic energy. All right, and they get to choose the damage type, but he is going to do force damage. And he is going to shoot this force damage out of the tip of his quarterstaff with magic, and it's not aiming for you. He's not aiming for Mike. He is aiming at the door at the back of the room. And he's going to do two D8s worth of damage plus one D6. And for 20 points of damage, which he so should have done to you instead, <laughs> he is going to completely obliterate this door, this wooden door at the back of the room that you could see before had been kind of like placed up against the back, kind of shatters and explodes into like splintery wooden pieces all about the room and slowly stumbling out of the back of the room. Two, two of these shard zombies that you have been fighting this whole journey, you were so familiar with them, come tumbling and limping out of the room. So just to give you some context of where you are, this is the room, right? You're in the center of the room because you were by the alchemy set. Our Dwega friend is down here 15 feet from you blocking the doorway. This door he shattered is over here. Again, think about it, it's 15 feet from you and these two shard zombies have stumbled out and Mike's been hurled. He's like sitting over here somewhere. All right, just to give you a theater of the mind idea of where everything's situated. Do we need to change the hours? At the end of the fight, we'll take off, but this is all happening very quickly. Each round goes for, each person's turn goes for um, six seconds per round of combat. He was trying to save these two poison zams. <laughs> All right, so he is not going to target you. He has just unleashed these two zombies that he had hidden in this, like it almost looks if you kind of, you can kind of see them now that they're emerging out of the darkness, that it was kind of like a little closet. Like maybe there was some experiments or something that had gone wry and he kind of just locked them in this like closet that was only about like five foot deep kind of thing. And they come tumbling out at you. Let me put them in the initiative order. There's an eight. So one will go between you and Mike at the beginning of the next round. And a 19, one of them will go first. All right, but they don't get their turns till the top of the next round. That was the Dwegar's turn. It is now Mike's turn. I can share with you that Mike has three hit points left. He has three hit points left. Dun, dun, dun. He is going to, he has thrown his dagger. It is hit with uh, a very small amount of energy. He's bleeding, he has bruised. He probably has internal bleeding from the, the size of that wallop. He is going to reach and he is going to try and fire his short bow at one of the two zombies. <laughs> He's gonna try and fire at one of the two zombies. I'm so sorry, chat. I don't think we're gonna get this fight finished this session, um, unless you guys do some like max damage real hard, real fast. <laughs> at these, yeah, you're gonna, at uh, these two zombies, um, Chris, could you roll on Mike's behalf to hit, please? You need to beat an 11. You need to beat an 11 to hit. Has rolled a 19. That's amazing. So Mike, little Mike, Mike the mighty, Mike the meat shield, Mike the motherfucker as he has been labeled. Pulls back and almost exhaustedly just uh, lets it go at one of the zombies. At 1d6 plus 6. Oh, that's, that's amazing for 11 points of damage at this one zombie. That is huge. That is huge. And this arrow pierces through like the icy form. So think about these like normal zombies, except they're covered in like blue crystals that are like protruding from their skin. And they, they look like shards of ice. 
um, yeah, and it kind of, and you see it kind of, kind of shatter the same way that last week when we attacked those uh, shard zombies, they did. It kind of penetrates, and then you hear like the smashing of glass as it kind of starts to shatter through its body. And that is Mike's turn. It is your turn again, chat. Here are your options. Here are your options, and then I will ask who you're targeting it at too. Type one to throw a firebolt. Type two, oh, hold on, I've got to, we've used a spell, so we've now only got five spells left. Uh, firebolt, ray of frost, another three scorching rays. You can cast shatter. Let me remind you that shatter is a, um, an effect that does damage in an area. So if there happened to be bad guys kind of close together, you could target more than one. Just saying. Uh, two, uh, five, sorry, cast blur. Give everything disadvantage on hitting you. Six, we can move over to where Mikey is, about 10 feet from us, and we can try to heal him. Okay, by a pip, Shatter has won. Okay, so we're gonna cast Shatter. I, I'm not gonna make any assumptions. I was gonna say I assume. Are we casting Shatter on the Dwegar or the two zombies? Are we casting Shatter on the Dwegar or the two zombies? The zombies? I think that's a good call. Okay, I'm going to have to roll uh, dexterity saving throws. For both of them. Uh, they need to beat 14. So let me, I'm going to roll them in chat. They need to beat 14. Zombie number one, who was hit before by Mike. Meets it, beats it. Okay, he's going to take half damage. He's going to take half damage. The second zombie. The second zombie is gonna take full damage. All right, we need to roll three D8s. Three D8s. Can I get a D8 from Roland, a D8 from Alicia, and a D8 from Mans? Alicia's rolled a one. <laughs> Mans has rolled a four. And a seven, redemption. All right, 12, you're going to do 12 points of damage. The first zombie is only going to take seven. Uh, seven. Oh, okay, he's, he's looking, he's looking real shit. <laughs> that first zombie's looking real shit. And the other one is going to take the 12 he's looking pretty shitty too so both of these zombies as you cast shatter the entire ground around them kind of ruptures up um with this like thundery damage it goes it goes boom and it kind of like rattles them because they're made of like half flesh half half icy glass and cracks on both of them appear to like segment their bodies little bits kind of rip apart and, and you know where blood was kind of this like bluish goo starts to kind of come out from both of them. They both look really shit. <laughs> is how much I can tell you, Ali, without telling you how many hit points. <laughs> um, okay. You know what? You guys are doing well. I'm, we can go a little bit longer. All right. So now that the, the zombies are in battle... This is so hard to just explain, but you guys are hanging with me and thank you so much. So now the order of battle is zombie number one, the one that's looking real fucked up, the Dwega, Mike, zombie number two, who's also looking pretty shitty, and you, Sin. They're looking a bit, they're looking a bit dick-eyed. <laughs> yeah, they're looking a bit dick-eyed. Okay. Zombie number one, the one that's looking real dick-eyed, uh, is going to use its distance, use its movement to kind of hobble towards you. Um, only about 
five feet into the room because he's all like, every time he moves, you hear glass like crunch and shatter um, within him as he moves forward. And he is going to remember last week in the house where one of them breathed on you. These aren't regular zombies. These are magically poisoned, alchemically shifted and manipulated by this Dwega um, zombies. And this is them at their full form. So it is going to release, release a 15 foot cone of cold air. It's not a cone of cold, it's called frost breath at you. We need to succeed in a dexterity saving throw or we're gonna take a bunch of cold damage. I'll post photos for sure. Alicia, can you please give me an exclamation point D20? And we've got to beat a 10 in order to succeed and only take half the amount of damage as this zombie lumbers forward and oh, its jaw seems to unhinge and drop unnaturally. And this icy cold breath um, shoots out of its mouth at us. With a two. With a two, we're gonna take the full extent of its damage. Just depending on how I roll. What is with these low? That's okay, I rolled two ones. So we're only gonna take two points of damage. Of cold damage as this zombie lumbers forward and opens up its mouth and ah, breathes on us. Okay. It is our Dwega friend's turn. And he is going to look at Mike on the floor and be like, <laughs> and see him not doing great and be like, I like keeping a clean lab may as well take out the garbage <laughs> and he is gonna launch another chaos bolt at Mike at Mike Mike has an armor class of 15 this guy has a plus 5 to hit 10 or higher and this hits Mike I'm gonna roll it in chat so you can all see its mouth opened the whole round I'd say so. It's blowing out. I think everything kind of happens simultaneously in a round. It has rolled a 16 plus five is a 21. It hits. It hits. And he's gonna keep with the, he is gonna, I don't know. He's gonna keep with the force damage, I guess. Cause that's what he did with his last chaos bolt. 2d8s plus 1d6, 10. He is going to unleash 10 points of damage at our little friend Mike. And Mike is down again. He's not dead. Each round we're gonna do a death saving throw because we're treating him like a PC because he's your companion character. So he gets death saves unless you decide to cure him. But Mike is down. He is bleeding internally, externally. He's concussed from a chaos bolt that just got lumped at him. He's also suffering, was already suffering a concussion from a tentacle that threw him at the ground. Not doing great. Down out of initiative order until he's back up. It was his turn, so we're skipping that. The second ice zombie is going to fumble its way up to you. It is their turn. You know what? It's gonna do its frost breath on you as well because there's a recharge on this, so I can't do it every round. I have to roll to be able to do it again. But I get to do it once, so it is also going to open its mouth. It's gonna walk up beside its its zombie companion. Again, they're side by side. They're about 10 feet from you now and it is going to <sighs> launch its breath at you again. Um, <laughs> Sean, can I please have an exclamation point D20? 
to uh, dodge this attack to only take half damage, you need to beat a 10. Rolled a 19. Fuck yes, so we're only taking half damage on this. Uh, they rolled a four, which means we're only gonna take two points of cold damage. Jesus. It is inching away. It's gonna take two points of cold damage. All right, and it is our turn again. It is our turn again. Same options as before, except with the added bonus of helping Mike. Number one, cast a Firebolt. Number two, cast a Ray of Frost. Number three, cast a Scorching Ray. Hold on, we cast Shatter before, so let me remove a spell slot. We've only got four spells left, everybody. Um, scorching Rays. Four, Shatter the same way we did last time. Uh, five, we can try to put them to sleep. Six, Defensive Blur. Seven, run to help Mike. Can we aim for his mouth for advantage? Not really, because I wouldn't say that these zombies are necessarily like, they don't, because if you'd been with us earlier, you'd see that they actually don't have brains anymore. They're not powered that way. They're actually alive because of magic. Um, so aiming for the brain and having a clear path of the brain isn't actually what kills them. You actually need to shatter them. Um, but I like your thinking. Sin always carries breath mints. <laughs> nice. You guys want to cast a firebolt? Fire! Okay. Um, for those of you who know, that's probably why you're, you're using it. Um, firebolt and Ray of Frost are cantrips. They don't actually take away from our spell slots. So you kind of can cast them as many times as you want. Firebolt. Who would you like to hi uh, hurl this firebolt at? You can only, this is just a single firebolt. It's like a ball of fire that you ha, come here, come here, ha, at them. Uh, at our Dwega, at zombie one, which is the more fucked up of the two looking zombies, or at zombie two. Or does someone have something creative they'd like to do with the firebolt? The big fella, we're going for the Dwega. Zombie one. I'll just see who kind of gets the most votes just with you guys saying who you want to get in chat. I am going to have to go in 10 minutes. Big guy, big guy, big guy, the main man. All right, we're going to cast this fireball at the big man. It's not a fireball. Firebolt. Fireball would be awesome. All right. Uh, horror, aka Marble Fanatic. Um, welcome back, and um, can I get an exclamation point D20 from you? Uh, we have a plus six to our spells, so you only need to roll a nine or higher to hit this guy. 13, amazing, we hit. We're gonna do two D10s worth of fire damage to this guy. <laughs> Mans, can I get a D10 from you? Ali, can I get a D10 from you? A nine plus a seven. 16 points of fire damage on this Dwega. I'm just gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna give you the option. You wanna kill him? Sometimes we can not kill. You wanna knock him out. You wanna knock him down, you wanna knock him out or you wanna kill him? You did exactly 16 points of damage. He had exactly 16 hit points left. No, 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 you can kill him. Hey, 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 hey. You can kill him, Ali. This guy's a bit of a dick. Oh, you, wanna, you guys all wanna knock him out? Of course Chris wants to kill him. Could 
use him before. Oh, you guys need a cure, right? You are infected. That's why I kind of gave you this decision. Yes, close the voting. I know I'm making the voting quick now. Three, two, one. It's pretty definitive. Okay, with this firebolt, you send this Dwega flying. It burns him, it singes him, his flesh crumbles. Oh, so many descriptions of like flesh burning his flesh cracks you see him start to bleed through his cindered blackened flesh that started to like you know when flesh gets cooked it starts to curl up over itself it's disgusting and grotesque and he goes flying back a little bit and as he does he kind of also hits his head and he's down unconscious on the ground just out of action out of action <laughs> is just completely out of action. All right, that is your turn. There are still two zombies behind you though, and they both have turns before you. Mike is Mike is in death saves. He is about to die. Um, the Dwega is unconscious and you have two zombies. I'm gonna roll both of them. They can't ice breath you, so they're just gonna try and hit you. The first one rolled a five, it doesn't hit us. The second one rolled a 17, so it does, because our alma class is 17 meets it beats it, and it is going to hit us for seven points of damage, slashing plus cold. Because these guys are still coming for us, they're not down. What's, 20, what's 23 minus seven, everybody? 16? 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, 16. I'm pretty sure. Thank you. Maths. I'm okay. It takes, just takes my brain a little half a second. All right. I'm going to roll a death save for Mike. I'm not telling you the answer. Because that's how I like to roll my death saves. And that's how we're rolling them in the campaign, by the way. Hey, Keith. How's it going? Uh, it is your turn again, chat. It is your turn. You have, um, you have these two, um, I guess we better keep help Mike if you want to do that between rounds. I mean, you guys know that there's a maximum of three rounds that can pass before he may die. You guys just want to cast shatter, 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 shatter. I didn't realize, and this is pretty cool, you can write the words in chat or press the number. It's pretty awesome. Had some fun. The weather is shit. No worries. Thanks for snoozing the ads. I think it's a good time too. All right, we're going to cast Shadow. We're going to try and get these two fuckers out at once, yeah? And end this. End this. Who said we might not be able to finish this today, chat? Who said? I'm just getting hungry, that's all. It's been four hours. <laughs> um, okay, Shatter is, as I said, so this is another one of our spell sluts. I like doing spells this way much more because then it doesn't limit you on what you can do. Um, they both need to beat a 14 or take half damage. I'm going to roll them in chat. Zombie number one. Roll to five. Fuckers taking it all. Uh, zombie number two. Rolled an 11 is also taking it all, baby. Okay. <laughs> Keith, can I get an exclamation point D8 from you? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um... I can't remember who I've had to, to roll so much. Alicia, can I get a D8 from you? And Sean, can I get a D8 from you? I'm sorry, I can't remember who's rolled so much. I will tell you that the maximum of these two zombies has nine hit points. If you do nine points of damage, they're both dead. <laughs> 14 points of damage. 14 points of damage. You sense that victory is near. You you think this is 
this is all all that you have aspired to do is help the people of Thornhaven. Your friend is down. You need to help him immediately. You've concussed the bad guy. He's taken out of action. Um, you can you can sense that the end is near, and with all the the fury and passion and fire within you, you cast this mega shatter that just rips in a ten foot. Um, area all around you and it just obliterates these two zombies they are made of like flesh and crystal and they literally explode in front of you and shards of glass and bits of flesh from what they used to be um, just like splatters all across the room they are close enough to you though that they are they that 10 foot circumference also hits um also includes a portion of this giant alchemy potion table in front of you. So I'm going to roll a d20 in chat. If I roll a 1 to 10, it doesn't do enough damage to explode the table of alchemy and all of its equipment. If I roll an 11 to 20, the alchemy table and all the glass is also going to shatter with your shatter. Okay. I will drink. I will drink. With the four, the entire cavern and this alchemy table rattles and shakes with the ferocity of your shatter, but you are very good at your arcane craft and you have focused so hard on the, the power of this thunder and force damage to hit these zombies and they shatter, but nothing else does. And we find ourselves out of initiative. We find ourselves out of initiative. Oh, Chad. Whew. Ah, that was intense. I am going to make a couple of calls from you because I think a few simultaneous things are going to happen at once. You're going to rush over to Mike really quickly and we're going to... I guess it doesn't matter fully. We're going to... Um... We'll give him our greater potion of healing. We'll give him our greater potion of healing and we'll, we'll pop him back up and I'll roll, roll for that in a second and then bump up his HP. As he's slowly coming to after you pour this potion carefully down his throat to heal him of his wounds, you run over to the Dwegar and you bind him. You pull the rope from your backpack and you you bind his, his arms together. You um, grab his staff, which has a crystal edge, and you smash it at the ground and it, it, it disintegrates. And now it's just a plain quarter staff piece of wood. Um, but his arcane focus, which was the shard at the top, has been destroyed. Um, we have it in, we have it online and so I think this is where we're going to have to conclude today's session uh, I assume you guys wanted to bind up the big bad because you want to interrogate him and maybe learn about how you can save yourself yeah yeah okay so that's where I'm just going to have to leave it. I don't know when the next session will take place because like I said, this time next week, I'll actually be running um, a D and D session for players. Um, but this is where I will leave you. So um, I will post in my discord when I plan on doing this again, whether I hop on a little bit early before my D and D session next week, because next week's a, a session zero. So if you guys can get here a little bit earlier next week from 10 till 12, I could run a quick two hour stream and we could finish off, um, this season. Um, and then at 12 o'clock I'm going to have to go because I have uh, my players, but it's more of a Q and a kind of talking about the adventure thing. So not too strenuous on my my dmness um but where i will leave you is with this chat so mike is healing in the corner 
I'm not looking as worse for wear anymore. This guy, can I, this guy has almost died, is it three times or four times? I can't remember. A bloody long time. Rav, sorry, I didn't call on you for rolls. Sorry, if people aren't active in chat, I don't roll, but that is absolutely fine. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Um, like I will post. Um, you have this, this Dwega situated, like you've dragged him into the main part of the room that is still lit and, um, he's looking really, really unwell. And so you've got him unconscious in the corner. I guess you could like heal him for a hit point with cure wounds when you want to talk to him, but that's up to you. And then you still have somehow all of this alchemy equipment, um, missing one major ingredient that we threw, remember? We have this alchemy set, and then we do have books and um, sheets of paper pinned to the wall. He's been working on something. And two dead bodies as well. Well, two exploded bodies. We could analyze, analyze bits of them. Yeah? So you have stopped the bad from doing, from continuing his experiments and doing his thing, but you still have a poisoned water source and you are still poisoned. So you still have a little bit to do. You need to cure yourself and you need to cure everybody else before more people die. And that'll be, that'll be where we're up to. It was a lot to get done in one episode, but I really, really enjoyed today. I loved it so much. I had so much fun. I hope you guys did too. Um, I guess there'll be a chapter nine. Can you get more from our blood? Yeah, we can take our time now. We know that the bad has been neutralized. I guess we can take some time. But like I said, time is running out for us and there are people on the surface that are going to have been infected before you. The more time you take, the more those people will die or, or turn. Yeah, but you do know Thornhaven is killing them. Thornhaven is rally, rallying people together and when they fully turn, are killing them. Yeah? Not many have been allowed to live like the ones that you've encountered in the Underdark. <laughs> no worries, Marvel. The Delian Tomb is a really, really fun one on my YouTube, but I haven't I haven't posted the last few episodes. Um, episodes one to four of this um, are on my YouTube. Um, I've got to edit the last four and then we'll have the ninth. So that's eight, we'll have the ninth episode. You can draw a dick on his forehead with a sharpie. Next week or whenever we play, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. I hope you guys had fun. I'm going to bring some music back in over here. I am hope you guys had fun. Oh, I'm knackered. I'm going to go drink me some fucking beer. I'm going to go drink me some beer. So like I said, Mans and I are now going to a beer festival, which is why I was supposed to wrap up half an hour ago. I wanted like an hour to rest. I think I'm still going to get about an hour to rest. I said we'd be there around 3.34 and it's 2.36 now. So I'm going to get some food. I'm going to chill for an hour and then your girl's going to go to a beer festival and drink. I don't really like beer. So all the cider that I can get my hands on and Mans will get drunk on beer. 